Welcome to the Present Fathers Podcast. This is the show that focuses on climbing the mountain of fatherhood together. We believe that dads matter. That's why this show is for you. So gear up, dads. Get ready. It's time to start climbing. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Present Fathers Podcast. My name is George. I'm joined with my co-hosts, Dustin and Justin. We are still waiting on Brandon. He'll be here shortly. And our guest tonight is Martavius Young. We are super excited uh, for him to come talk with us. He has five kids, so he's never busy. And um, yeah, we're just gonna have a great conversation talking about fatherhood and uh, you know how he runs his his squad over there. He's got a whole fire team over uh, at the Young House. And uh, yeah, so Martavius, welcome to the show. And uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit about your family to get started? Sweet. First and foremost, thank you guys uh, for having me. Uh, I am a dad of five. Uh, me and my wife been married uh, going on seven years this year. Um, we met back in 2013. Uh, I, I'll just give you guys a background. I'm originally from Alexander City, Alabama. Uh, ended up, um, lost my mom at the age of 15. Um, sad, but the great thing about that, she just kind of uh, like a Monday before she died, she told us uh, she was coming home on Friday and she ended up dying that Friday. So uh, that word, that last message that she gave us at the end of her life was something that sparked uh, hope within me and just let me know that, you know, God is real and that he is something uh, and that eternal life that I, I really didn't have an understanding at the time. But, you know, that last message that she gave me and not too long after that, I ended up getting baptized. Uh, not going to say that I walked the I walked the walk, but I got baptized and, you know, uh, started my quarterback journey. And that led me to getting a full scholarship to the University of Southern Mississippi. Uh, things uh, was great at times. Things was not so great at times. My redshirt freshman year, uh, both senior quarterbacks got hurt. So I had my time to shine. I was going to be able to finally start as a redshirt freshman ESPN Wednesday night game against Rice. Uh, I'm excited. The anticipation is just crazy. Uh, whole hometown is just looking forward to see me just crush it. And three plays later, I'll break my leg. Uh, <laughs> national TV, and <laughs> I'm out for the season. So, uh, that was just the story of my life at that time. And from then on uh, out, you know, we had a coaching switch and things just kind of went down here because after that injury, uh, mentally, I wasn't ready for the impact that it was going to have on my life. And I didn't have uh, the right mentors, the right people in place to help me mentally. You know, there was a lot of people cheering for me on the field, but I had nobody off the field to kind of guide me and give me the leadership and the mentorship that I needed. So uh made some bad decisions, but ended up finishing uh, my career at Southern Miss. It still was a great career, still met some amazing people, still learned some amazing life lessons, but ended up getting into indoor football just to continue to pursue that, that dream of going to the NFL and that just kind of led me to get into indoor football, which I had no idea about until I got an agent. And you know, I figured out that, you know, not everybody makes it into the NFL after college. You know, you hear about the numbers and the percentage of people who don't make it, but it isn't until you realize that you are one of those people that's not going to make it. So uh, you have to go a different path. And that was God kind of uh, still showing me at the moment, you know, dead ends don't always mean that's the end of the road. You just have to take a different path. And I still have to show you some things about yourself and show you some things about uh, who you're becoming in that process. So uh, that just led me to indoor football. Uh, which was a crazy experience, but I met some amazing guys. And that's when God just started bringing mentors uh, who was veterans in the indoor game, but they was also fathers. So now I'm having to like play football, but I got some guidance along with that. So I started to uh, mature some uh, off the field mentality wise. I started to mature and uh, I uh, played my two years, first year in uh, Huntington, West Virginia, second year in uh in uh, Nebraska, then my third year uh, brought me to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where I met my now wife and played here, won three championships. But like I said, God had been preparing me that entire time. So after winning that third championship and, you know, hoisting that trophy up, I realized that that was still a void that no matter how many games I won, how many rings I won, like that those things were not going to fill that void. And so I just got honest with God and I told him like, hey, I've 
done in my way for so long. Now I want to try to do things your way. So, you know, I decided to walk away from the game of football. For me, I always believe in uh, no matter where I went, no matter what team I played for, the first thing they gave you when you came into training camp was a playbook. And that's the one thing that I understood. If you want to be successful in, successful in sports, you had to know that playbook. If you wanted to get on the field, you had to know that playbook. So I decided to put down the football and that playbook and pick up the Bible and pick up books that was going to allow me to be equipped to be in position to win in the game of life and also being equipped to win as a father. So that's when I decided to start my personal development journey, start my faith journey, start get serious about who I am and what I want to become in life. And that's when I started to tell myself and start to declare to others I was tired of performing for applause. I was tired of putting on the helmet and nobody knowing who I am and go to work on me. So when people see me off the field, they don't say, hey, you play for this team. They don't, hey, that's a man of God. Hey, that's a man of faith. Hey, that's a man who loves his kids and he's unashamed about these things. So that's when I decided to go to work on myself. And, you know, people see the fruit of that today. So people see me and they hear me speak and they uh, love everything think about me and the one thing that I always have to bring people uh back to is like hey I had like I had to go through some things to get here the story isn't pretty and there's no sunshine and rainbows about anything that I've been through it was a process and along that process God was with me the entire time because like I said once my mom passed and she gave me that that just look a little bit of hope and once I got baptized, like I said, I didn't live that Christian life, but I knew when times were hard, I always called on God. So throughout this entire process, I always knew there was one person who I can call on who's going to bring me somebody who could lead me and keep me on that path and put me back on that path. And that's what he continued to do. So the path was not pretty. The path was not easy, but the process and what I've become because of that has made me into the man I am today. And that's why I just love to share so much about my faith. That's why I love to inspire people. That's why I love to give people wisdom. Some Sometimes people say, hey, you're just full of this. You're just full of that. Like, you know, so many things. I'm like, I don't know these things. I've just learned from some great people. And I believe everybody has something of value to offer. And if you just take time to actually listen and hear people out and just mine out the gold and what they're telling you, then you're going to add value to your life and you're going to add value to other people. So for me, I just love to listen to people who have what I want. I didn't grow up with role models uh, in my community. Like when my mom died, my dad wasn't around. So I had my uncles who were great people, but they were wasn't the man who I needed in my life. I needed people who would actually take time to actually build a foundation within me that will last and whether some of the things that I went through, but I didn't have that. But I don't regret that because they did the best they could, the best they can with what they had. And I knew it was a process that God had me on this path and he was going to be with me on this path. I just had to trust that process. It's easy to say that now, but looking back, I know he was with me and he was guiding and leading me throughout that entire process. So uh, like I said, I met my wife in 2013 and I just knew I was red to mentally. I told my friend when I saw her, that's going to be my wife. And she said I stalked her on social media. I was just telling her, like, you inspired me. <laughs> um, she really was, like, inspiring. Like, everything was positive and motivational. I was like, this is my type of lady. And I guess that's stalking. So, that's um, yeah, it's so she... Stalking. Uh, yeah, it's not stalking. But like I said, I was just the crazy story about me meeting my wife. Like she knew I was a football player and she thought I was a player. And it was just like I said, when you mature and you decide what you want, God is going to give you that opportunity to see if you're really true to your words. So it was this one chili who was amazing girl. And I actually ended up going out on a date with her and didn't try anything. I knew it probably wasn't going to go there. We were just she was shy. I was shy. That just wasn't going to work. So I didn't try anything. And my wife, like I said, she thought I was a player. And the one person that she went back to was this girl. And this girl said, hey, he's an amazing guy. He didn't try anything. We didn't do anything and all of these things. And she was the one that vouched for me. So when I look back at that moment, when I actually thought with the right head, I was like, God, I am maturing. And it's in a way that like he's not going to, like I said, Satan doesn't entice you with things you don't like. He's going to entice you with things that you love, things that you can't resist. And the fact that I resisted the temptation to act on lust, to act on the things that's going to give you that temporary satisfaction. I was able to have somebody who stood in the gap because God placed her in that gap and vouched for me when my wife came along and said, hey, what do you think about this guy? So uh, it was a crazy situation of how, how it happened. But like that's I said, crazy. when you prepare it mentally for that. And like I said, I was ready for that. And when God brought my wife, he had to make sure that I was ready for that because I believe she's a gift from him. He's not going to give me a gift to mishandle. So I had to make sure and I just made the right decision. Like I said, she was the person who vouched for me. And here we are um, almost 10 years later with five kids. So 
That's us That's awesome. <laughs> That's so, dude, I'm, we're fired up now, man. We're talking in the chat <laughs> over here. We're like, yeah, that is so cool, man. So uh, just a lot, a lot of, we're going to take a lot of clips from, from that segment right there. <laughs> That's a very motivational, awesome story already. Um, there's so many things in there that I uh, really love to kind of just unpack a little bit. And um, so one, just the, the, the role that your mom played in your life, but then kind of the lack of a father figure. And then, you know, how now as a father, you realize how important that is. So, and that's kind of a big reason why we wanted to start this podcast in the first place was to, to help dads have a resource to be better, right? And it's such a problem on our society. So, I mean, what are some of the, you know, top one or two things that you didn't have growing up in, in you know, in your story um, that, you know, all dads need to realize is, is a huge factor that, that plays a massive role in both boys and girls lives growing up? Uh, for me, man, it's structure. Like I had no structure. Like my mom worked a lot. So I was kind of going with my grandma, my auntie, my uncles, so many different places. So there was no structure. And with it being no structure, like I was free to do whatever I wanted. And as a kid, you don't know what to do. All you want to do is eat candy, eat snacks, go to bed. So you don't brush your teeth. You don't do, you don't like make your bed when you get up in the morning. That's a habit that you build. I teach my son all the time. The worst thing, the hardest thing to break is a bad habit. So if you do something, do it right the first time. And I just, that's a seed. So anytime we're doing something, that's the first thing I ask him. Do it right the first time and you don't have to worry about doing it wrong again because you're building a habit. So for me, I think it's structure. And that just came with sports. When you think about sports, everything has a structure. Like you can't like. You have a time for everything. You have quarters for a reason. Everything is built as a certain time to get certain things done. So uh, I think structure is one uh, for me. And one thing that we do with our kids, we have a, 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 a star chart. And what we put on that chart is like we we reward the behavior we want to see. People may see our chart and we have like make your bed, brush your teeth, take out the trash, do the dishes, feed the dog. It's so many little things. But what I learned early on is Sometimes our kids can do these things and don't get rewarded for it and they get tired of doing these things. And so for me, like I want to reward that. I want to let them know like, hey, I see you with this small win and I'm going to reward you for that. And it's also our boys, they're at the age where they love to play video games. So now we take what's important to them. They love to play video games. OK, we will buy the system, but it's not a privilege for you to just get on this system and play. You still have to earn your time. So you're going to get rewarded with a dollar amount, 10 stars, one dollar. So and you're also going to get one star is 20 minutes of screen time. So if you want to play your video game, you can take out the trash and not take out the trash. But if you don't take it out, just understand you can't play your video game because you don't have any time. So for me, it's just teaching our kids like these are little habits that's going to create these little wins. If you can go to school knowing that you've already been successful with three things, just think about how your day is going to be. So for me, it's always giving them the jump start on their day. They may not get it right now, but I know as they grow and they get older, these are habits that they're building. So for me, it's always about having that structure and just having a foundation for them to build on. And I think the second would be um, just... Uh, being confident, like I had no confidence in myself and it just stemmed from like, I don't think anybody like, uh, like make me feel confident within myself. So for me, I talk to my boys uh, before they go to school. I just let them know. Uh, I give them a voice. Our house, like you have to have a voice in our house. Uh, and that just comes with just having principles and values and things that's, that's none wavering. So uh, for, for us, I know the one most important thing that I had to learn is like sometimes, especially our oldest uh, son, like Sometimes he do things and he get blamed for everything. And sometimes I, he would want to like express how he feel about a certain situation, express what they and I cut him off. And it was like, no, 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 no. You have to give him a chance to actually voice his, his opinion because you cut him off, let him know like your opinion doesn't matter. And if his opinion doesn't matter in this house, think about what that's going to do when he get to school, get in these social settings. So for me, that's the first thing that I had to learn. Like give your kids a voice regardless if they're right or wrong, allow them to express their opinion, give them that confidence. So for me, I like part of my calling I, is being a speaker. Like when we think about me and my life, I believe purpose drips playing quarterback was an accident. People told me growing up, like you're shy, you're bird, and you're all these things. And my mindset is like, you cannot be a quarterback and be shy. Like you can, but like you like that. So for me, it's like understanding like the way that God positioned me because I didn't play quarterback until my mom died. I was a free safety and 
quarterback coach just happened to see me throw a football a couple of weeks after my mom died and threw it like seven yards. He was like, you're going to play quarterback. And that's what my He's journey like, you got a candy kid. <laughs> yeah, <'cause, laughs> that's, awesome. <laughs> that's what it was. But for me, looking back, like you guys have no idea what my mom passed. Like I compartmentalized every single thing. I was in my head. I didn't talk to like I was really when they say shy. It just I just feel like I had no voice and I couldn't trust anybody. So and for you me, didn't it's have like mentors just, either. So at, that at all, even didn't have anything. Yeah. It, it, it was so being a quarterback forced me to actually have to get out and communicate. It had to. Like, and, and so when I tell people now, like when you think about a quarterback, you can't just know what you have to do. You have to know what each and every person on the offense have to do. So when I start thinking about my journey and everything that you know God allowed me to go through while playing quarterback and just the training that he had me to go through, learning these plays, being able to give the same play five different ways. So like for me, when I'm thinking about a message, that's me being a quarterback. That's me giving the play to somebody who's struggling with this. Guess me giving the play to somebody who's struggling with this. It's the same message, but you're able to give it to somebody in a way that they can receive it and put them in position to win in their life. So when I give messages, that's my whole mentality. You are a quarterback. You are literally putting somebody in position to win in their life. So for me, when I do these, it's not about me. It's not about the likes. It's not about anything. It's me knowing that people tell me all the time, you should be a pastor. And I'm like, if God wanted me to be a pastor, he put me in the church. It's the reason that he allowed me to grow and build on social media and just become like a voice for so many people that's, you know, going through a lot of things. So for me, it's like uh, being uh, confident in where you are and just understand, like, like I said, there's principles and there's values and there's things that I've learned along the way that for me, kids are these the most smartest people in the world. And sometimes we don't give them enough credit for that. We dumb everything down. We try to make everything so simple. And for me, it's like, I want to have real conversation with you because I know you understand because every time we have these conversations, that's the first thing I ask my kids. Do you understand? And they say no, then we can make it more simple. Yeah. But if they say yes. Now we can have a conversation about these things. Because, like I said, I want I like you, to, I, I want you to have understanding above anything else. The Bible, right? Tells the point is to draw them out. You know, gr help yes, them grow, yes, not yes. just keep them where they're at. Yeah. Yes, because you know. me, like I said, I, I want them to like. I used to ask my my, my boy Riley uh, before going to school. I asked him three questions: Do you have inter integrity? What is integrity? Do you believe in yourself? Do you have confidence? And I asked him these questions: And uh, are you a follower or are you a leader? And I would ask him these questions every single day. And he asked me like, Dad, why do you always ask me these same questions? Because I say, when I drop you at, off at school, I'm not going to be there with you. But I'm giving you something that you don't need me to be there with you. I'm giving you these C's. And it was one day that he came home and he told me about this time where he was a follower and he was a leader. These kids were doing something. And instead of doing and jumping in like everybody else did, he did the opposite of that. And I said, son. Now you are a real follower because you did this. And I said, now you have to be a leader. Now you have to step up and help other people not go that way. Now you have to step up and teach other people that. So for me, it's about teaching them, teaching them uh, some of these things. But also, like when they actually live these things out, celebrate that with them, help them understand, like, this is a situation where you were a leader. This is a situation where you had integrity. This is a situation where you had confidence in yourself. So for me, uh, that's what I try. To, I, I love to try to do with my boys, just try to give them confidence in, in any uh, shape, way, shape, or form. And I think because mainly because I didn't have that and because I didn't have that, I isolated myself and I just felt like I was never worthy of having what other people had or going or getting what other people had. And that just called me to compete and compare with other people when that's not my place. My place was to be me. And I didn't really understand that because I had nobody there uh, telling me that I was worthy, telling me that I was uh, confident and had all these things. Yeah, yeah oh, I can resonate with that 100%. So I had a single mom as well, uh, Mercedes, mm -hmm. and uh, did a wonderful job, taught me everything I know. You know, she did a better job than a lot of, you know, people who had a mom and a dad together just by herself. But she wasn't really able to teach me leadership in the way that a man mm -hmm. could have, you know, and I think that was yeah. something I struggled with for many years. And I didn't realize that I struggled with it. I just thought it was normal to, you know, kind of be the way that I was. And it's taken many years to kind of learn, okay, what it means to be a man and what it means to be a father. And it sounds like you're just doing an amazing job of giving that to your kids, giving them that structure, you know, that you and I probably didn't have, you know, because we were growing up without yeah. it. And uh, just, just great to hear that. I mean, such a great example of using screen time to your advantage. The biggest complaint that I see from parents all the time with their 10 and 12 year old kids is I can't get them off the phone. It's all about screen time. Well, you just flipped that into a positive and said, you can have your screen time, but you better go uh, take out the trash first and then you can have it. So I love right. that. I think as dads, we need simple fixes versus like these big overarching, you know, concepts that don't work for us. Just boom, 
here's my system. Here's how I'm going to do it. So how did you learn these systems? Did you think of this yourself or did you find it from somebody else? Uh, like, this is great stuff. Where'd you find all this? Yeah, this simple book uh, by Jay Pella. It's like uh, called 52 Things Kids Need From. And it's, I was like, I can write this book. It's simple stuff. It's like basic things. But most people don't do the simple things. They don't do the easy things because we think parenting has to be perfect. And that there's no way to be perfect, but a million ways to just give some type of effort to do anything to be a better dad, to get better. So uh, I just literally like make things simple. Think about what I didn't have and try to like in some way, shape or form, try to be what I needed and try to do things like if I like doing certain things like my kids love to play video games. I don't like to play video games. Well, it's not about me. So every now and then I'm going to play Madden. Every now, I try Fortnite. I cannot figure it out, so I don't even try. <laughs> it's so uh, confusing with the boss. Yeah, it doesn't make any yeah, sense. I yeah, build yeah stuff. I you're like, what am I, Bob the Builder? Yeah, like, people yeah. People shooting at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's it's things like I said. I like if I want to know something, like somebody's doing it. So just find people that's doing what you want and get advice from those people. Uh, it may not work for you uh, specifically, but you can take it and twist it and bend it to make it work for you. If you think it's something that's proven and you think it's something that you're going to see some fruit from it. So uh, it was just learning like parenting, like the easy way. It's already hard enough as it is. So like, why not make it easy and fun? And I think once you do that, it takes a lot of stress off of you and having to be perfect. And that just uh, taught me is like your kids aren't comparing you to anybody else. They don't know like parenting from anybody else. You're the only thing they know. So like they aren't comparing you to somebody else's parent, at least at this age. All they know is you and they think you're the best in the world at it. So like you don't have to go out and just be crazy and be perfect and do all these things. You just have to understand like kids love time. They love attention. We had a movie night. Uh, just um, over the weekend, we took the kids on Friday. We made a video. My wife's like, you know what? We're going to let you guys pick out your own dinner. We took them to Walmart. They picked out whatever they wanted. And like, they actually, they loved that. And they ate their food. So it was like simple things. If we can, like, we can't do that every night. But I might need you know, to try we, that. <laughs> getting my kid to like, eat is it, ridiculously yeah, it was, hard. It's yeah. I'm like, kid, yeah. don't you want food? There's food. But eat it, the food. Right. Yeah. My, my problem is if I did that with my kid when he's old enough, he's anything like his mom he's gonna come back with like a lobster some crab meat like, <laughs> 300 what? hours later like oh, let man, me sew yeah. my arm real quick <laughs> yeah so and, and real thing. quick for those watching yeah. uh the book is 52 things kids need from a dad written by jk paul leitner I'm probably butchering that last yeah, name. Yeah. Pay he has a, he, he has like a that couple read, books. That that yeah, like, there's like there's like eight different versions of this. I think there's one for moms. And, yeah, anyway, I think he had, yeah. he had one for wives too. That was like simple things that you could do. And yeah, that's so you can go. It, it, it's twelve dollars on Amazon. You can probably find it cheaper somewhere else. But yeah, so thanks yeah, thanks yeah. for that recommendation. That's that's awesome. So Martavius, and you I, found yeah. a lot of success as a dad. What do you think is different about your approach? Why do you think, because I would say 70, 80% of dads are struggling. I feel like they're just falling behind. That's not, they're not connecting. You know, what, what do you think you did that has worked so much better for you? Why do you think other dads are struggling where you're not? Um, um, I would say most guys are uh, stressed over work, stressed over marriage, stressed over so many different things. So for me, if you guys look at my profile, uh, you notice like, you know, what's important to me, like marriage, family and inspiration. Like those are my pillars. So most people don't know what their pillars are. Most people don't prioritize what's important to them. So they just feel that they in with just anything. So for me, it's like thinking if I want my marriage to be great, I got a bucket for my marriage for that day. If I want to be a great father, I have a bucket for fatherhood for that day. If I want to, like I said, give inspirational message, I got a bucket for that day. We do finances. We do different things. We got a bucket for that day. So every day, these are the buckets that I'm feeling. I'm not filling my bucket with anything else. All these other things don't matter because I haven't prioritized them. So for me, I prioritize what's important and that's where my time goes. Uh, if you want to know what's important to somebody, look at where they spend their time. So for me, I invest my time to where I want to see a long term reward from that. So me as a father today, I'm not perfect by far, but this was made back in 2015 when we had our son like this is the type of father that i want to be and these are some of the things that's not gonna allow me to do that so there was a lot of things i had to unlearn and a lot of things i had to learn and like i said i pick up books like like 
people have testimonies about how they do things. People share all the time. So for me, we have the amount of resources that's available to us. Like all you need is to make just a little effort. And I think most guys don't really know where the resources are, or most guys aren't plugged into like resources like this. Like this is President Father's uh, podcast. Like if you want to know what it is, like you should be on something like this. So I think a lot of guys just spend their time, especially if you get off work or you're doing certain things. Then like I watched the basketball game last night, but I also read some did devotionals that morning. I also spent time with my girls. I also had conversations with my wife. So those buckets were full. So I was able to enjoy the basketball game while doing another Zoom. So many times I think guys just don't really uh, they're burnt out, they're tired, they're stressed out about so many other things. And I think partly that's because they have so many different things on their plate. So for me, I'm just intentional about what's on my plate. I don't like overdo or I don't just overextend myself like with you guys. It took me a long time to get back with you guys, just being honest, because like I said, it took my wife. It took her because she's always in the DMs and I was like, she she don't miss the comments. She don't miss anything. I'm persistent. But, I'm persistent. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 <laughs> yes. And Thanks, she, Tyler, like I said, good advice. Right. And so she just stayed on me about doing this. And I'm like, for me, it's like my wife is my helpmate. God sent her to help me. She's a gift from God to me. So if she sees something that I'm lacking in or she sees uh, uh, she sees something that I can't see and she recommends, she's like, oh, this is a great opportunity for you because this is what they stand for. And you they kind of align with what you stand for. So you should be doing this. And I'm like, oh. Now I see that and now I need to reach out and I need to be doing these things. I need to partner with these guys because, like I said, I love to listen. I learn to learn. I don't know everything. So I'm always open to hearing other people's perspective and I'm always open to learning and just sharing my testimony with other people. So uh, for me, I think most guys just need to be plugged into healthy environments. They try to get uh, they try to get um, um, help. They try to get parenting advice. From guys that's not great like you can't get parenting advice from guys that you work with it's the reason that you guys want to go <laughs> out so and true. party <laughs> and do all these like it's the reason they invite you to these events it's the reason they invite you to these things that has nothing to do with being a great dad like you need to be around guys that's gonna hey guys it's this is podcast it's happening tonight it's at eight to eight to nine you may have to invest the hour but it's gonna be worth it and most guys just decide this isn't worth my time and that's why they don't get the results so for me like I say, if I invest my time in something, it's because I think it's valuable. It's because it's worth it to me. And that's one of the buckets that it's going to feel for me. So for me, like I said, you have to have those buckets or those pillars. Uh, you have to prioritize what's important for you and you have to focus on those things. Everything else, it will come. Everything else will be there in this time. So for me, I just literally prioritize what's important. And if it's not something that's uh, in, in, in alignment with the things that I want or the things that I value, then like I don't. I just don't spend my time with it because there's a lot of time wasters. I figured it out for, what, 24, 25 years doing things my own way. So when I decide to go God's path, like, it's like for me, you get on the interstate, that GPS is going to give you a, a direct address to a specific yeah. location. And once you decide to not follow that GPS and go over here and go over here and go over here, you can't get mad when you don't get there on time. So for me, I'm not going to like God has a GPS for us. He has a position for us. There's places and spaces that we need to be. And we are at those places. We get mad because we're stressed out. We're tired. We're lost. And we can't figure out why everything is going wrong. It's because you have got out of alignment. I tell people all the time, when you think about a car and, and the wheels are out of alignment, there's nothing wrong with the car. Most people get mad, hit the car, blame the car. It's like, no, dude, get the tires. Go get the tires rotated. Get things in, 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 in alignment. That's like, that's what it is. Your priorities aren't in line. So that's why you feel like everything keeps going this way or going this way or you're stressed out or you can't get here. It's because you don't have your thing, your tires, you don't have your life, you don't have the things that matter to you in the proper place. So once you just understand like there's nothing wrong with you, but it's the priorities and the habits and the things that you have. Check in with somebody. Take your family yeah. to church on Sunday. Join a, you, join a group, a marriage group. Get on a present a pres father's podcast. <laughs> These are the things that's going to help your car stay in alignment. So, like I said, sometimes it's, it's the simple things that you have to talk to guys in that way because they get cars. And when you say something like that to a guy, they're like, I never thought about it that way. And then once they put those things in order and they understand, like, now you don't have to fight the wheel. All you have to sit do is sit back and just enjoy the ride. Now you're like, oh, why didn't I know this earlier? Because you didn't have the resources. You didn't have the right people telling you these things. And I think once you get plugged up with the right people, that's going to give you the right information so that you can go in and make the necessary changes. 
Now you're going to be living that life that God has promised, that life in abundance, that life where not going to say the troubles aren't going to come. Like you said, the, the, the weapons may form, but they won't prosper because you're, you're prepared in the for right them. path. Yeah, it, exactly, quick. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Quick. And I love that yep. GPS metaphor. And it's funny because we were talking about my heavy foot and all my tickets. I think God actually <laughs> gave me a missile guidance system. He was like, hey, dude, you're going fast. So uh, yeah. all joking aside, yeah, no, I think B had something. Uh, Brandon, you said you wanted to chime well, in. I wanted yeah, to make yeah. Real quick, two, two quick points on what you just said, Martavius. And then, yeah, Brandon, uh, we'll let you get right into this and then they'll probably have a whole host of questions after that. But so the one that you were also saying, just to take it a step further about being a father is, you know, we're, we're charged with leading our family, right? And so our right. orders come from above, right? And, the, yeah. and so you've got to follow those and then lead your family in yeah. accordance with those orders, right? And so that's yeah. that's why you talking about staying focused on what matters and what's worth your investment is so critical because that's our job is to figure that out for our family and um, ensure that you, your family isn't drifting off course because if you're off course, yeah. you're leading them astray too, right? Potentially, yeah. so... That's so critical that you were really honing in on that for men. We have to take that seriously. And then the second that you really started getting into also is accountability. And that's something we've kind of harped mm -hmm. on a lot here too is, um, you know, so like for me personally, the other guys on this podcast are a lot of accountability for me, right? If I'm not acting the way I should or we're, we're prepping for something and I'm not doing what I need to be doing, like they hold me accountable. They call me out. And, and that's not a bad thing. Like that's, that's a dirty word in our society today. But accountability mm -hmm. is a beautiful thing, especially among men. Because we need it's that sharp edge. We need we need to be chiseled, right? We're, we're a rock that needs to be kind of smoothed out in areas and stuff. So um, you were just really going into a whole, a whole lot uh, on those topics. It's just so good, that segment. But I want to kick it over to Brandon. And Brandon, uh, introduce you to Martavius since you were able to join a little bit late, getting back from your son's soccer. So uh, yeah, Brandon, yeah. take it away. Awesome. And and I agree. Keeping each other accountable is, is such a crucial thing because iron sharpens iron when it's held accountable. Um, and... One of the things you touched on was isolation. Uh, I think that's such an important thing for dads to realize is that a lot of us growing up when somebody wouldn't help us with something or wouldn't guide us, we isolated and fixed it ourselves. And, and guys are already naturally like that. We want to fix everything. We're fixers. And so for me personally, I, I had to learn that that isolation was just one of my defense mechanisms. And I had to grow out of that. And Proverbs 18.1 told me that a man who isolates himself seeks his own desires and he rages against mm -hmm. all wise judgment. So that's literally saying that you're, you're acting foolish. If you isolate yourself, you're, you're going against what God's wisdom is calling for your life. And so for me personally, I had to pull myself away from isolation. And this is not only just for myself, but in my marriage, like, you know, I would get angry mm -hmm. or I get prideful and I'd want to isolate because that's just how I handled things. And so I had to grow out of that. And it, it was such a, uh, a crucial thing. But one of the other things you touched on too, that was so brilliant. And I, and I want to, I want to kind of emphasize on it is balance. You know, uh, your balance of your life, where it's your marriage, your kids, your work life, uh, any kind of personal self-care that you do, uh, mm -hmm. self-improvement, any of those things, you have to balance and prioritize the time for each and every single one. Cause if you don't, what's going to happen is one of those legs is going to be weak. And that table is going to collapse or it's going to tilt and the others suffer because of that. And so for me, it's such a vital thing to make sure that I have balance in my life. So, yeah, but, uh, but I guess uh, one of the questions I wanted to uh, ask you was what are the, the steps that you took initially when you realized that you were isolating uh, to correct that? Oh, man. Um, that happened literally with my wife. Uh, we were getting mad and we just had this thing. We have an argument. We have anything. And we was living together and we would literally walk past each other and wouldn't speak to each other for days. And that was just like a wedge. And I just, that was unhealthy. And so for me, it was like, uh, I mentioned, I didn't mention this guy because I went through this group. It was a, um, uh, a Bible study called Every Man is a Warrior. And it's a six to nine month process and it is long and it is like you said it is uh it's a healthy environment to grow but you have to really get honest about some things that has been going on in your life past present uh whatever the case may be so that place allowed me to heal from a lot of things that place allowed me to be vulnerable about a lot of things that i was struggling with and isolation was one and that thing that, that like that group just gave me a different perspective to understanding, like literally when we say like you're not alone 
and some of the things that you struggle with actually sitting in a group with uh, I went to that like five or six times and it, every time it was like 10 to 12 guys in that group. So it was a personal setting, but just different guys seeing what these guys struggle with and us coming together, talking about these things and seeing like the similarities in some of the things that we struggle with. That's when my eyes open and like, why have I been isolating myself when this whole time, like there's been other guys struggling with this. So it's almost like we're all just walking around blind waiting for somebody to come and lead us. And it's like, Hey, if you just cut the light on, you're in a room right now. It's it's dark because like the light is off. So once somebody put us in that room and we would just, just cut the light on and really go to work and talk about some of those issues, now you can repeat. Now you can repair these things. I tell myself all the time, like you, you uh you repeat what you don't repair. So isolation, if you continue to do some of these things, if you continue to get into arguments with your wife and you continue to like pretend like you don't see each other and you stay in the same house, like that's a cycle. So you have to decide today, do you want to move forward or do you want to continue to move in those circles? So I made a decision. This is no longer going to happen. So that Bible quote that says, don't let don't still be angry while the, before the sun goes down. That's stuck in my head because I can lay in my bed, pissed off at my wife, get up the next morning, still pissed off at my wife, go to work, like go about that day, still mad, go to bed, still mad. It's like, why are you carrying this baggage? Why are you carrying like, it, there's no reason to have that conversation. I made a video the other day and talked about petty arguments. And I talk about like these petty arguments are like weeds. If you don't cut it off at the root, it's going to affect everything else. And that's what isolation was for me. It was a weed that was affecting everything else because when I isolated, I got into my head. So now it's not about being a dad. Now it's not about being a, a, a husband. Now it's about the message that you're saying. You don't even believe those yourself. Now he's attacking me. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say. So now he's attacking my word. Now he's attacking my faith. Now he's attacking the things that really matter to me. So now he's trying to get to the foundation of who I, who I am because he's seen me go to work on my foundation. He's seen me tear down a lot of buildings, a lot of structures, a lot of things that were holding me back. And he's seen me go to work and build these things back up. So now he's trying to get in there and put a crack in that foundation. That's when I understood, like, if he was to do that, it's because I'm allowing him to do that. So he doesn't have that power unless you give it to him. And that's when I decided, like, he no longer have that power because I'm no longer going to give it to him. So isolation is not it's, it's not it's not an option for me because I understand, like, the detriment of, like, allowing that to come in. It's a wish that he's going to have to separate you from God and everything else. So it was just a decision that I made. And like I said, it didn't happen because I think I'm this strong guy. Like, I was in a healthy environment seeing with my eyes the amount of guys that struggle and go through so many things. And they just literally, uh, I think T.D. T. D. Jakes wrote a book that he talked about. Uh, I forget the name of that book, but he talked about uh, this fish that was dying and the fish was just crying and nobody can hear him because he is, he's in his bowl. He say, like, think about the amount of guys that just crying on the inside, crying in their mind and nobody can hear them. They're just walking around and nobody knows they're suffering. Nobody know that, know that they're going through these things. And once I saw that, I was like, that was me at one point in time. So when I get the chance to speak into a man's life, you best believe I'm going to speak into that man's life. You best believe I'm going to do these things. So sometimes I think it's, it's hearing somebody else's testimony or it's reading the book to understand like we're not alone. And I think once your eyes are open to that, you can't unsee those things. And now you feel like it's your duty to help other people and help lead other people out of those dark places as well. Absolutely. Man. And and letting the bitterness grow like that, it just it compounds and it, Oh, and you like you said, you're giving Satan a foothold in whatever situation that you're at in your life. And I, man, that's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. I've got to write that. Thanks one for sharing. I'm so that. guilty of that. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to work on that. Yeah, it, Justin, gonna, up, brother. yeah I was going to say, so life's not fair. Uh, not for a lot of guys, unfortunately. And, um, you know, it's like, like we've talked about accountability partners. We've talked about people who are, are, are great um, role models. And, and honestly, most of the time it's guys I've noticed, like my father uh, grew up without a dad. He had a stepdad who died when he was 13. Um, and it, my dad is one of the greatest men I know. He's the reason I am who I am. And, and same thing for Brandon. Um, but I, I would say that the guys without role models usually become the best role models because they've seen the darkness. They've been in the darkness. They've seen the struggles. They've, they've been through everything. So they know what they don't want for their kids. Um, so I say kudos to that. Second, I say kudos because you're genius, man. You set up a system that makes those kids work for you. I sat there wondering, how do you make, <laughs> how do you make it work with five kids? 
I understand oh, that. Well, you have to, right? I understand. You, you, <laughs> you, you, you're, I like where you're at, but yeah, no, it's, I'll, it's I'll joke it aside. Me and my like, wife, though. Uh, not just it's me and my wife. We, yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all are a good today. team. Yeah, that's exactly it. I'll joke it aside. Like, I could tell you guys mm-hmm. run a, a tight ship and, and in a way that is, it's fun. It's enthusiastic for the kids. Like there, I've learned a lot here tonight. I'll be honest. Um, and that's, that's what I was going to say, like life, not being hard. Some of these guys in isolation, they don't have people speaking for them. If anything, actually society right now talks down on men, talks down on uh, fathers. And that's actually something I was going to say was uh, like, uh, we talked about, I followed you for a while. Um, there's a bunch of influencers, Andrew Tate, for instance, who's a big advocate for men and, 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 you know, fathers and stuff, same thing um, with some of the other people I follow. Um, so I would definitely say, man, like having, having people as a mentor or being a mentor is, is one of the best things you can do as a dad or a, as a husband or as a leader. And, and I think leadership is such a hard thing to pick up, but it's such a great thing as well. And I think you've really, really nailed it, man. So kudos. Thank you. I learned to accept compliments, so I'm not going to turn you down. <laughs> it's it's hard, right? It's weird. It's it like is. it's like a weird thing that you have to develop. It's like because yeah. a lot of times people don't think we're deserving too. of you know yep. like we don't want to like seem proud or something. Yeah, that's and but it's funny. That's something that we need to teach our kids too. Is is like how to do that and. Right. So you you bring up another good point, but uh, yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> running a type ship or you know having a system that works and all that kind of stuff is important to you because i think a lot of parents um well one it is it should be a, a partnership it's not just like you as the man walking around it like a tyrant it, there's your your wife <laughs> is your is your you know assistant your partner it's not a, a <laughs> you running the show but if you don't have um you know discipline kids kids crave discipline they don't act like they do but nope. they're trying to find where their world exists what their boundaries are and so if you don't ever have any parameters for them it actually increases like stress and anxiety and lifelong teaches them no skills to be an adult and i you know we, in our society it seems like that's just a lost art in a lot of ways and you know parents are just like well i don't want to make them mad it's like so what they're <laughs> misbehaving as a child your job it Right. Their feelings in the moment are almost irrelevant. Like they need to learn a bigger issue here, you know? And so then afterwards it's met with tenderness and instruction, but like, especially if they're really going out of line, like you've got to enforce, you know, it's the, you can't right. just be their friend. So you were kind of getting into that a little bit, but uh, Dustin, no, I, had I, something. I, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was, I, I tell my, we, me and my wife tell our kids all the time, like nobody is going to love you as much as we love you. So as hard as you think we are on you, life is going to be a hundred times harder. So you have to understand, like, when we do things, it's not to, like, hurt you. We're doing this to, like, build you, to, like, teach you so many things so that when you are outside of our house, you have to understand, like, life is not going to be easy for you. People aren't going to treat you uh, kind just because the Bible tells people to treat people kind. Like, that's not going to happen. But at the same time, that shouldn't affect your character. That shouldn't affect your integrity. That shouldn't decide who you're going to be and how you're going to respond to those situations the same way that they do. So we just want to teach our kids how to respond to certain situations. And like I say, it's one thing to like talk about these things with your kid, but you also have to be living these things out. Uh, so for us, we understand if we're telling our kids something, then we best believe we better be living these things out because like our son is eight now. So he he's smart. Like he picks he know if you shooting the breeze and he's going to call you out on it. And we teach him to. Uh, like I said, we want to give our kids a voice and that's not a voice to be dis- disrespectful, but a voice, like I said, accountability could come from the kid's side too. Dad, you say and do these things, but you tell us these things. That's teach your kid how to think and process things mentally, how to see a behavior and understand this doesn't align with what you've been telling me. So do you want me to do this or do you want me to do that? Like for me, that's critical thinking for an eight-year-old. And that's what I want my son to do. I ask him all the time. He talk about football, ask me questions. Like, what do you think about this player? What do you think about this player? I say, okay, ask me, like, what's my opinion on this player? Don't just ask me, is this person good, this person not good? Like, I can say he's the worst player. In the world. I, I, Tom Brady is not the best football player of all time. He's like, oh, and then he's going to tell his friend, Tom Brady's not the best football player of all time. And I'm like, why? Because your dad said that. And I'm like, no, dude, ask me my opinion and then think about what you think about it and then weigh those opinions together. So now he come and he asks me different things. He don't come and say, dad, is this a yes or a no? He's like, what do you think about this? 
And if I say something like, well, I think this, so I don't know about you. And so now it's like a conversation that we can have, but at the same time, it's like, like it's for me, it's funny to see him do this, but like, for me, it's baby steps. You have to understand, I'm not training you for today. Like, we're not just talking games. Like, I'm training you for the long run. So now when you start to have these conversations, when you go to school and kids start to talk to you about these exactly. things, like, you know how to process it. You know, how to, okay, my dad has told me these things. This uh, this doesn't align. And that just goes to, like, we talk, when we talk, we, like, we have real conversations with our kids because kids today, they talk about things in school and they use cold words for things. So when our kids come and they're talking about code words for just anything, us, we didn't teach you that. We, you know what it is. So if you heard a code word, there's a conversation being had somewhere. And now we have to have a conversation about that. And I want you to recognize when somebody mentioned this or somebody mentioned that, OK, I know what this is because my parents had that conversation about it. And so now I know to avoid these people, to avoid this conversation, don't get sucked in. And like I said, our kids are young, but at the same time, discernment doesn't care how old you are. You can be able to discern. You can be able to have wisdom. You can be able to have understanding if somebody is teaching you these things. And that's that's my mentality when I have conversations with my kid because I want, like, yeah. I can't be in the school with you. I don't know it. Like, these kids are right. bringing things from home. Like, they aren't just kids. They are what their parents are. So they're bringing things from home and they're going to try to give you these things. They're going to try to talk to you about these things. So I want you to be prepared for these things. So uh, that's why we have some of the conversations with our kids and it's not to like harden their heart or anything. We just want to teach them and prepare them and also help them to mature in such a way emotionally that you're able to like be able to understand some of these things. And like I said, another thing when they talk, talk just talking about emotions with our boys, they are very emotional and that's perfect. I tell them all the time, cry, I give them a space. Hey, go to your room and do this. I want you to feel like you can do these things. And when you get done, come out and let's have a conversation about it because you have to learn how to steward these emotions. You can't get mad, upset, go hit your siblings. It don't work like that. You can cry because you're mad about something, but let's have a talk. And I want you to be able to steward these behaviors in a way that it's going to help you and not hurt you. So uh, we just try to like notice things about our kids. And this, like I said, we we like that's important to us. So we just try to teach yep. our kids like some things you can't learn from a book, but if you just watch your kids enough. They'll tell you what they're learning. They'll tell you what they know. They'll tell you what they don't know. And all you have to do is teach them. They're just trying to figure their way out in this world. And it's, it's our job to help steward them on that way. So many times they just come with teaching and they just come by watching and seeing what they're doing. Right. And I really love how intentional you are about having conversations with your kids and then, you know, kind of making it appropriate for what stage in life they're at. Um, you know, we actually just made a video about that uh, with with the shooting that happened in Nashville and kind of talking about you have to address difficult things with your kids. Yeah. So that was just kind of the impetus for making that video. But that that tenant has to happen all the time, right? It, you can't just do it with really big, scary things. It also needs to be with day to day things, too, where you say this is what we believe and this is why. And especially if it's controversial issues, you know, go back to the source material, go back to the playbook. Like you said, pull out the Bible, show your show your child why you have that strong conviction about it. It's not just because my dad said so, you know, as they yeah. age, you, you need to help arm them with that. And that, that's such a beautiful point you made. And I'm, it's really uh, inspiring to hear that you're doing that so consistently. And um, I think we could all take something from that. So appreciate that. Uh, Dustin, did you have anything? Yeah, so I work in anesthesia and I like to think of myself as a paranoid optimist. I think that everything's gonna go well, the patient's gonna be good, but I'm paranoid that something's gonna go wrong. And I'm always looking through, okay, what what's gonna bite me in the butt here, right? Is it this problem they have? Is it this about the surgery, whatever it is? And you have a very analytical way of looking at your kids, it sounds like, where you're thinking, okay, I know my kid's gonna do great, but what's gonna get me in trouble here? Um, what about my son or my daughter here is going to be kind of the biggest issue. And I, I think I'm going to start trying to apply that to my son as well, where I look and go, all right, he's three years old right now. What's the issue that's going to get me in trouble over the next few months that I can address and my one thing that I can focus on? Because as you talked about earlier, I want to fix a hundred things a day, right? And then I don't fix anything. Whereas if I just worked on one thing I was going to fix that day, I could get it done. So I really... I needed to hear that today because I'm going to work on focusing on just that one thing at a time and not trying to be a superhero and fix a hundred things because then it all falls apart. Yeah. And that's, we have five kids, so we can't do everything for all our kids at one time. So for us, it's like our, our, our eight year old, like he's to that point where he, like I said, he's the oldest. So he get, 
yelled at the most, and he was just being honest with us. Feel like I always get yelled at, and I was like, <laughs> yes, like man, what? Yeah, the oldest. Like, it it always happens that way. And I was yep. like, you know what? Um, his feelings are valid, so maybe we need to do a better job of like toning our voice down, or whenever the kids are in trouble, not specific, always calling out his name. So one thing I've done, like when they start yelling at each other, instead of calling his because he's the oldest. I started going to the youngest son and be like, hey, what's going on down there? And so for me, it's like, regardless of the situation, I want him to always know I got your back. I hear you. You feel a certain type of way and I'm going to do the best job I can to fix that. It may be something small. It may not happen overnight. But at the same time, I'm going to do, I'm going to do my best to meet you uh, at your level and try to improve as a dad. Because I tell him all the time, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes all the time. And I tell him, I, I literally gave him, the OK, if I'm yelling at you, tell me, dad, your voice is too loud right now. Because sometimes I'm not yelling. I just raise my, my, raise my voice because I want something done. And they don't understand that. So for me, like in order for him to understand it, I want him to be able to like, feel okay with telling his dad that your, your voice is raised right now. So I want to give him that green light to do that. He haven't done it yet, uh, but I have to continue to remind him, like, all you have to do is tell me. But at the same time, I can't put that responsibility on him. That's why I changed it up and be like, hey, instead of calling your name, I'm going to call the younger brother now because that's the one thing I can do. I can't tell you, tell me when I'm being loud, but I can start calling your younger brother. And that just lets him know just because I'm calling your name doesn't mean you're in trouble. I just want to like know what's going on. And he didn't understand like you're the responsible one. So of course I'm, I'm going to call your name. He didn't understand that. So for me, it's like you have to be able to switch things up and do things. And like I said, that was the one area that we were struggling with with him because he's pretty smart. And that was just something that he just like I said, he gets really emotional. And he told us that. And I was like, OK, this is bothering me. He, rather get bothered by things but this one thing is bothering him so this one thing that i can focus on and like we just had it today and i had the opportunity to be like hey call out Asher instead of riley and he was like okay that worked he can see that i'm actually trying and just the effort for him i think matter more than anything yeah wow. that, that fairness is so crucial too man because you know when you when you have multiple kids like they're gonna see who you're being more lenient on and who you're not and for me, that's why it's so crucial for me with my discipline or anything. I have to be so very intentional about it because, you know, if I'm going to teach them emotional regulation and intelligence, I have to exhibit it myself. Yeah. And, you know, if, if I have to, if I'm going to show them the love of Christ and teach them the love of Christ, I have to model it myself. And so the yeah. modeling is the hardest thing. But I think for me, one of the things now that we're talking about goals, what are some some specific intentional goals that you're doing with your oldest or any of your kids for that matter that helps kind of keep them on those 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 guardrails that keeps them uh you know in 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 the the ways that you want them to go. Um for us, I would say right now they have like money goals, certain things that they want. So we try to hold them accountable. And that just comes with the star chart. But I think the most important thing is like conversations. I'm not sure if you guys pick up or take your kids to school, but that's like a 10 minute window span that I get every single day. So just being able to have those conversations within those things, be able to talk about uh, some of those things. But probably goal wise right now, they're about to go into baseball here in the next two weeks. And so that's one thing that I get to help coach. And I've been telling them um, over and over, like, you know, it's coming. You can decide now. Do you want to be prepared and ready for it when it come, Or do you just want to show up and just like you've never played before? So I've been having to like actually, uh, man, I'm, I'm an athlete. So when I do things, we have to do it. And like, <laughs> I get it. They're kids. Competition, man. Yeah, they're yeah. kids. And, and I have to I have to remind myself of, of that. So uh, from experience, I can get very uh, I can critique pretty hard and I can push it pretty hard. So I've been trying to, like, tell myself and scale that down and not make it mm -hmm. to where, like, they don't actually want to play the game because of how dad is treating them or how dad is making them to do this. So mm -hmm. I yeah. want it to be fun because me playing a sports, I never want to push my kids in the sport. I wanted them to get in it on their own. And now that they've done that, I don't want to be the reason that they don't want to do it. So for me, like, this is a chance for me. Like I said earlier, like, Satan doesn't uh, entice you with things you don't like. He's going to entice mm -hmm. you with things that you like. And I love sports. And this is a way for me to, like, prove, okay, you say you are this type of dad. This can't just be off the field. This can't be when you're not training. This is showing your kids what type of dad you are, too. They don't want to look at you as the coach that they don't want to play for. This is my dad. He's also an amazing coach. The things that he represents and talk about 
at home and in real life, he's living these things out on the practice field. He's living these things out on the game field. So right now, I think ultimately my goal as a coach for Riley, our oldest, is to like not be so hard on him. Uh, one thing that I've learned uh, about kids and about boys uh, and raising boys is the difference between tough love and love. Boys don't always need tough love. Sometimes they just need love. They just need a hug from dad. They just need you to like put on that fire, go out there and make s'mores with them. They just need that. And that will make their day. So that's one thing that I've been learning. And as a coach, my goal, tough love. Yes, sometimes. But at the end of the day, everything has to be founded on love. When you're training, when you want them to do this, they're still kids, man. They're still trying to figure it out. They're not you. They're not competing at the highest of the highest level. They're not trying to be. They just want to go out and have fun. So that's what I've been telling myself. And that's what I'm trying to prepare my mindset to as we kind of come up on this baseball season. And I just want to be there and just be able to enjoy it with them. And like I said, not feel like I'm pushing them away from the things that they want to do and actually allow them to play the game that they love and just allow them to have fun and just develop who they are in their personality, personality and their character as well. That's awesome. And you know what? We, we got a guy, man. I'm going to go ahead and tell you the beauty of this podcast. We've had some awesome guests and we had a gentleman named Chris Singleton. Uh, hmm. Hey, Chris, if you're watching, man, we appreciate you coming on. But uh, Chris uh, played pro baseball. Uh, with the oh, Cubs. dang. And um, he had a he has an amazing story. He's a, a motivational speaker, but his his kids, he said he had the same problem being, you know, a, a pro sport player. You know, as a coach, it's hard, especially as a dad, too, because, you know, you're like so competitive and you want your kid to win. You want them all this. But he said, you know, there's a few things that he does on the car ride home. And um, he would say, you know, did you have fun? And the second question would always be, what do you want to work on for the next game or event? And then he would also say, um, you know, what did you do well? And mm -hmm. that way you can kind of engage with your kid and talk about it. But he had a rule and he said, you know, if you're wearing your hat, so the hat on means we can talk. If you take your hat off on the car ride home, I know you don't want to speak about it. Oh, dang. So that was yeah, he, amazing he advice. Those and I immediately started doing it with my daughter. Oh, yeah. It's, like, it's, 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 it's like so much harder with daughters, too, because like, they're, you know, just so sensitive about anything they're doing right and it's like well honey you have to improve a little bit like we can't just you know so that those three questions have been so helpful for me because it, it's kind of a it's kind of a positive sandwich right it's the one is like did you have fun or you know like what was your favorite part you know kind of tweak that one the second one is you kind of invite them to say what they want to work on and she'll answer me almost every time now too oh you know i need to work on my handstand for gymnastics or whatever and then the third one kind of brings it back to well what did you do well so it, it they're telling themselves what they did well and they're not just dwelling on the negatives and I, it just really changed car ride homes for me i've been doing it now for about a month month and a half since he was on our yeah. show and hit us with that super helpful yeah. man so was, martavius is taking notes i love your style yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. that was honestly hey. one of the best things i've learned through just like talking to all the people we have on the show and all the books you've read and i was just like man because because it is right like as da dads and men we just get so into, into sports and like i didn't play pro sports or anything but i played sports my whole life and it's just like who you are you know and absolutely more more kids probably quit sports because of their dads in the car ride home than any other reason and that's sad so that this tool has really helped me kind of keep it in a nice little box that yeah. doesn't step out and so from personal experience it, it pays off yeah, yeah and, we talked this oh, sorry, speaking on sorry. speaking on the car ride home i think liz brown or jim Rohn used to say it's like a uh, rolling university like he used to put them tapes on in his car and just listen to things like with your kids like that time can be crucial if you just take advantage of it, man. If you just like, it's a short amount of time, but if you really want to like figure out what's one little thing that you can do, just think about any time that you're in that car along with those kids. Don't cut the music on. Don't do anything. Just be there. Be present. You don't have to worry about work. You don't have to worry about what we're going to cook when we get home. All you have to do is just worry about that time that you have with them in that moment. And once you, like I said, that's why I wrote it down. Cause I like those times, like, for me, it used to be like, we just, I'm tired. We're just waking up. You got to come back home to your sisters. Like, it's a quick ride. So it's just silent. And it was like, man, that silence is like death. Like, who wants to like sit in the car with the kids that you say that you would give your life for? And like, it's just silent. Like, that just, that just irks me. So it was like, 
that's a that like that's just wasting time that you have with your kids because they're not going to be that small forever. At some point, they don't want you to drop them off. I'm not ready for that. But at some point, like, Dad, yeah, I don't need sure. your like. They already asked me, can I ride my bike to school? I'm like, no. Like, so for me, it's like you don't nope. get that time forever. <laughs> So for me, it's like that's just one of those moments that you just if you have that time and just just take advantage of it because you can like instill so much and you can make it so meaningful for your kids as well. So that's just one of those areas I used to take Riley by himself and ask those questions. I probably should get back to asking those questions because now I have Asher. And he's about the same age that I started with Riley. And I just like those times are crucial. So now I just ask some basic questions about what they're looking forward to. But now, like I said, I want to get intentional going back to like what I used to ask Riley because when he started telling me things that was happening in school, I was like, man, this has actually worked. Like I'm not just beating a horse on the head. Like these things actually, he understands these things. So I think I probably should start back doing that with his brother as well, because I know it's not going to just be me asking the questions. Riley's going to chime in and he's because he's it's in his head. So he knew it. He's going to be able to relay these things to Asher. And I think it's also going to help build a bond with them. So, and I think it'll just make their school day better as well. Yeah, absolutely. And to kind of go back. Um, so, we were talking a little bit about the car ride home. And one of the other things I think, I don't know if Chris had said this. I can't remember. You guys spot, uh, kind of backed me up on this. Um, I think he had said, or somebody had said somewhere, uh, if a kid's been playing sports, make sure they're hydrated and make sure they're fed uh because that can affect the kid's mood very very quickly so making sure, like trying to say hey you want something to drink you want to go get something to eat you know that can also be one of those things that if they're just not in a great mood you can kind of cheer them up mm -hmm. instantly and i'm not saying reward them every single game or something but you know make sure they're fed you know and that's that's mm -hmm. one of the things that I, I it stuck with me for some reason but that's something that you know, you don't realize you like your kids won't always voice these things to you. Right. Um, but to go back to the thing, purple stuff, yeah. sunny D. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's great drink. No. Um, <laughs> so, Mr. Squeeze it. Remember yeah. the little twist top? <laughs> Dude, those were, it's maybe that's so a 90s good. thing. I feel apple like kids juice. don't have that anymore. What those, is apple juice? It's green, <laughs> baby. It's green. Those Mr. Squeeze it. You guys had to no. have those after like baseball or something. Oh, right? I love that. Um, the nostalgia. Yeah. So, so going back to um, talking about like instilling and asking questions, I, I wanted to comment earlier. It, it, it kind of gives your kids solid solidarity and, and kind of allows them to have their own opinions on things where, you know, society today is, is so crazy, especially with social media. I can't even imagine growing up as a kid today and all these voices and, you know, coming at them from 50,000 directions. So the fact that you're doing that and practicing that with your kids is allowing them to not only block that noise out, but make their own opinion on things. And usually they're going to go back to saying, Oh, well, mom and dad said this. And I think that's something parents need to practice a little more is, is just having those conversations because it really can affect day to day what your kid is being exposed to, what they're agreeing with or not agreeing with, having their own opinion. And then it's going to make them more independent in life or less independent, just depending on if you do it or don't. Um, so I think that was a very, very valid point. And it's it's something that kind of resonated with me and I wanted to kind of touch on because I think that's I think that's genius, man. Like you're, you're creating a young adult, honestly. And and yeah. you don't even realize it in in the mm -hmm. time that you're doing it. It's I don't know. I just like that. I really think. Well, it also right. opens the door too. It's like like if you do hear something that you aren't sure, like if you plant the seed that you can come ask me, and I, like I'm not gonna get mad at you because I think a lot of times they'll hear something funky from a friend at school or something, and they're like, "Well, I can't ask my parents about that because they'll they'll be like, well, 'Well, where'd you hear that?' You know. So that's also the other half of it is like you have to invite them them to come with you for like, "Mom, I heard this," or "Dad, I heard this." At school no idea what that means what is that and then you you have to kind of handle it there and that reassures them too that you are um go going to be truthful with them but also to guide them and they and they want your direction so if, if they if you get to that point where they're coming to you with questions about things they've heard or things that have, have been told to them that means you've really earned that trust and and they still want you to guide them and, and direct them and that's huge especially like justin was saying with social media and everything they're hearing and seeing a lot of things today mm -hmm. so you've got to establish that kind of the the reciprocal there of you're going to tell them how that you know they need to prepare themselves but also to invite it back so 
Yeah. And this that stuff is not slowing down. And I think that's what made me and my wife early on. We was like, we're not going to be the video game parents, the tablet parents. Like, we're not allowing any of that. It was like, um, you think they're going to stop selling it because you don't want to let your kids see it? So uh, for me, it was understanding, like, you can't keep your kids immune from culture and what's going to happen in school, but you can't teach them to live above it. And that's our goal. I want you to be able to have a tablet. I want you to be able to play the video game, but I also want to teach you how to be responsible with it. I want to also teach you how to like see things and be and understand like, hey, this is happening. So when our kids see like ads now, like they know what ads are. So like they know these people are trying to sell me something every time they see an ad because they used to click and they used to, like, so we have to like, that for us, like showing this, that's going to be times where in real life, there's going to be things or ads or whatever the case may be. These things are going to pop up. And I want you to be able to identify it. People see it and they laugh at us now. It's like, well, it's just an ad. To an adult, we know that's an ad. But to a kid, like they have no idea what it is. They just see it as a fun game that when you get a thousand games downloaded on that tablet and now you got to go delete them. Now you're like, man, come on now. At some point, you got to recognize this. They can't recognize it because you're not teaching it to us. So for us, we want to like teach them how to identify these things. So we learn like early on, like that's just our kids like playing a video game. That doesn't make them bad. They doesn't. They also love playing outside. You just have to learn how to teach them how to store these things. Like I said, when we came up with the star chart. That was the reason why you're going to get it. But you have to understand it's not going to you can't access this like 24 seven. Like it don't work like this. We're going to teach you how to be mature and, and responsible with it as well. So. Yeah, that's, and, and, that's super important. The re- teaching them that they have to be th- moderation and responsibility, right? I mean, th- the big thing there is. Ah, what's is, up? <laughs> I love it. You, you can't shelter them uh, necessarily I from things out, in man. the culture, you. but you can you can surely teach them how to be moderate and responsible with what's what's presented to them out in the open and. And I think that's just one of the things where we have to be uh, so intentional with not only our children's hearts, but with their minds. Mm -hmm. You know, when when that intentionality is there, it's one of the most crucial things we can do as parents besides, you know, teaching them about Christ and the the truth and giving them our time. You know, I mean, it literally determines the outcome of their lives. And so, that yeah, that's that's such an important thing for sure. Uh, I was going to mirror something real quick. So the social media thing. Um, just a thought on this. That's why guys like you and, and like us and, and others that advocate for fathers and, and the things that are right in this world need to be the voices that kids are seeing and hearing. Um, and, and I think that's what makes this worth it and makes what you do worth it. Because, uh, you know, like every day I'll, I, I could have a bad day and then I'll see some of your content and I'm, hey, listen, you know, I'm like, oh, that's my boy, my Tavius. And it gives me a good message. And, and I think kids need that too. You know, we talk about adults in social media, but kids need a good daily mes- message, excuse me. Um, so I, I think maybe if, if they are, you know, getting into the social media thing and they, you really don't want them to stray too far. Like you said, you need to equip them, but like maybe follow some people who are responsible that you know are good for kids. And, yeah. you know, uh, I know I hate to bring this up, but Miss Rachel, my kid freaking loves Miss Rachel and everybody loves Miss Rachel because she's so good for kids. Um, so just just my thought on that. But I, I think it's I think it's good. Like pages like yours and, and others um, are, are what kids really need. Martavius, real quick, where do you get your resources for, um, you know, code words from kids, um, where they're getting information from, all this kind of stuff? It sounds like you've got kind of some good uh, ideas and resources for where your kids are getting this info. Where do you uh, what do you look for it? Like uh, stuff that they bring home. Yeah, exactly. So you mentioned like if you hear a code word and you, okay, I know what that really means. Um, Can you give maybe an example of that and like like where you learned it? Like a body part, like boys, you know, boys, they just say things that's like, they come up with code words for your penis. And it's like, dude, you know what a (laughs) penis is. We, we ain't got blow pops. We ain't got like just different things. We're just like, Oh my big dogs. So, That's right, yeah. I'm gonna yeah, bring back like, commercial from the nineties out of my head. <laughs> yeah, like we don't we, we don't we don't talk about that. So for me, like when I hear things like this, is like okay, you know exactly what it is and you know the word for it. So like when I hear this, it's like okay, who have you been talking to? And we don't do social media with our kids. They they do PlayStation and they do the chats with, but they have certain like we my wife loved to play the video game with them. I don't know why. Uh, but she's actually, she's actually pretty good. Um, 
but she limits the amount of like the friends that she has. She know who they're talking to and all these things. But it's just certain things, you know, kids pick up certain things and they just talk about some other random things. So if I hear them talking about like there's so many like code words for just different things now that I can't. Um, it's just so yeah. many that if you just listen, uh, my wife uh, has a niece. She's in um, high school right now, senior. She has a, a nephew who's just a couple years older than Riley. So when they start talking about these things, like we just end the conversation. She talked to her niece all the time. So she tried to stay in the know because at the same time, she wants to know what's going on with this age group because it's coming down. Like it's going to trickle down because everybody yeah, wants to be like the seniors and the juniors and the high schoolers. So, you know, it's going to trickle down to the middle school and it's going to go down from there. So she just stay in the, like the conversation locally of what the kid, these kids are talking about. And then you have to watch what the kids on the video games and some of the things that they're saying. So uh, they just say certain things. And then when you start, we start to hear our kids. They don't really repeat it much into uh, like unless we hear them on this or they come and they say, well, dad, this person is doing this. OK. We don't like we don't give second, third chances like this person deleted. Like the fact that they feel comfortable enough talking to you about this thing. OK, we're cutting them off right now and they just go and do it and they don't mind doing them and they don't mind coming to us. Like one thing that like I used to, this is one thing I learned. People used to talk about back then. Don't be a tattletale. And me, I'm like, be a tattletale. Like you <laughs> tell me everything. Like, be, like <laughs> I'm like, look, we're going to build trust here. I want you to feel like you can tell me anything and dad is going to do something about it. That's what I want. For me, it's like understanding, like, we're going to build that trust no matter what. So I tell our kids all the time, be a tattletale. When it gets to that point where you're just trying to get your brother in trouble when he's really not doing anything. No, that's a different story. Now we can talk right. about that and have a conversation. But as far as some of the other things, like I, I, we encourage them, like tell us everything. Number one, because we want you to trust that you can come to us because we wait to you in middle school and then we're like, come and tell us everything. And it's like, well, I couldn't tell you that then. So you have to understand trust takes time. And you have to build that trust. And it starts, like I said, at this age right here, they have to be able to feel comfortable uh, talking with you about these things. So uh, you just have to build that trust. So we just try to start understanding, like we're not parenting for today. We're going to enjoy today. But like our kids are going to be in sixth grade, middle school, high school, like within the next um, 10 years, right? It's eight. So before that. So we have to understand it's not just about today. It's about just a couple of years from now. They're growing. And like I said, these things aren't slowing down one bit. And the amount of things that's infiltrating the school system uh, is crazy. And you're crazy if you think it aren't. So for us, like I said, it's just preparing for these things and also preparing our kids for these things as well. Because like I said, you can't keep them immune from it, but you can teach them to live above it, to uh, uh, be able to see it. And also be able to acknowledge it as well, because many times, like I said, it comes like when you become a leader, you can't just see something, then you be the only one walk away. You have to acknowledge right. that. You have to step up for the people who don't have the parents like you have. Not saying that we're perfect, but we taught you to recognize these things. Now you have to step in for other people. Now you have to really be a leader outside of the car ride. Now you have to go and make decisions and do things for other people as well. And, and when they see that light that you're doing, that's you stepping into who you really are, stepping into your calling. That's you stepping in. And just as a kid, that's your ministry, being able to do this for these people. So I tell our kids all the time, most people never go to church at all but the way that they see that you live your life the way that they see you respond to certain kids who are the mean and the bad kids they're going to be drawn to you they're going to be attracted to you and those are the people that's going to want to be around you at all times and those are the people that's going to want to come over to your house those are the people that's going to come over to your house and now they see your dad and your mom they fall in love with your dad and your mom not because they're perfect because they treat them like they're valuable they treat them like they're worthy they treat them like they're special and they have a voice and they have all these things so for us we don't want our kids to go to other people's house when they're old. We want all the kids to come to the house. We like we trying to have awesome. our kids may not like it, but we want everything in house because we want to set that environment where kids come here and they just feel worthy, loved, and everything else that we feel like kids needs. Kids they're like they're valuable, they're precious, and the problem is. Most people don't treat them like they're precious. So they have all these cracks and bruises and all of these things like I did uh, because people mishandled me when I was young, not because they did so uh, on purpose, but because they didn't know what they were doing because all they knew what they they, they knew. They, they had to go and make the money. They had to take care of the kids. So they didn't have time to read the book, to get on this or get on that. They didn't have podcasts back then. So all they knew what they knew and that's what they was building on. But us, 
We have a different story. We have all of these things. So we're able to treat them like they're precious. We able to handle them in a correct way and treat, teach them and train them and build them up the way that they should go. So when they're old, now they won't turn from it because they have a foundation with no cracks in it. They may have some flaws, but there's no cracks in their foundation. And now yeah. they're able to build on what we started. So that's our whole purpose. We're not building our kids and training them to be kids. We want them to be amazing adults. We don't want them to be amazing teenagers. We want them to be, like I said, just the most amazing people that people will meet. And that just, like I said, I told my wife, I've started praying for their spouses. Like, I'm, I'm a girl dad, three girls. I'm not the one saying, hey, you're never going to date. Like, you're going to date. But when you date, best believe that standard is high. Like you're not settling for less than what God has yes, for you. Sir. And then you meet that person God has for you, you best believe you're going to know because your dad's been praying for him since you were just a baby girl. So, and that's the same with my boys. I'm praying that God will cover them. We talk about the schools. I pray every single day that God will have a spiritual restraining order around our elementary school, around our neighborhoods around here, around that, like the, the city. Like I pray I, there's a spiritual restraining order. The e evil say you cannot even come on the premises. You cannot even come close. And I know that's not going to happen by accident. I know he's going to slip through because sometimes things just happen. But at the same time, that don't mean I can't pray for these things. That don't mean I can't equip my kids to see these things. That don't mean I can't teach and pray with and for my kids about these things and teach them how to pray with and for these things. So for me, it's just being conscious and aware and purposeful with everything that I'm doing. Understand it is not for today. It's for tomorrow. And when tomorrow comes, you're going to be doing it for that next day. And it's just an uphill battle that you have to continue to show up and you have to continue to fight and do your part. Understand that God is always going to do his part. He's always going to bring the right people that you you need at the right time to give you everything that you need and to also have your back. He's always going to, like you said, iron sharpens iron. This right here, guys want to get better. This is how you get better. It wasn't an accident. I've committed my time to becoming this person. I didn't fall into this person. If he were to see my history, they, there's no way this guy can be talking about these things. But when they see the track work, when they see the receipts, like you go in the store and you buy something and you come out, People say, hey, you got a receipt for that? Here's right here. I pay the price. When people see my life, hey, here's a receipt. Man, I, I pay the that. price. <laughs> this didn't come free. Like, I put in the time, the effort, the commitment. I've sold up the podcast. Like, people say they get tired of listening to things like this. I listen for hours, two hours, on Pete, five, 10, 20 times. These same things. It's in my head. It's in my soul. This is just who I am. And that's when I speak. It's because I believe these things. This is my foundation. This is what I have been built on. This is what I'm building on. So I would not waver from these things. So life happens to me all the time. But just because it's happened doesn't mean it's, it's going to move me. My, my foundation is solid. So nothing is going to shake me. I may get upset. I may have some setbacks. I may have different type of things that's going to happen. But that's temporary. It won't last forever. Continue to build. Continue to prepare. Continue to equip yourself and your kids and your family and your wife and your community and the people that you're surrounded with and the people that get on President Father's podcast. Continue Continue to equip and do your part because when the army comes together, nothing will withstand the power and the force and the impact that it's going to have on the kingdom for God. So that's my whole mission. And that's what I love to do. That's why I show up every single day, understanding that it's a battle. Most people hear my messages and think it's for them. I'm speaking to myself. You guys got the time hop out. It shows you everything that you posted a year ago. These are seeds. I say things today, understanding it. it's going to come up again next year. And what I said today, I'm going to hear that. And I'm like, this was a seed that you planted. This thing is still growing. This thing is still growing. So every single day you are planting seeds. You have to determine what is the crop that you're going to reap. What seeds Great. are you planting? And the, listen, the problem is most guys are planting weeds. And that's why they're seeing what they're seeing in their life. If you want to plant and grow fruit, like this is where you plant that fruit. You need what these guys are sharing with you. And like I said, I didn't show up by accident. I got around guys like this and spent time in environments like this because these are the guys that I want to be like. So when you see me in this circle, I like I supposed to be here. My gift made space for me to be here because I invested in my kill. I didn't just show up on accident. These guys just didn't reach out to me by accident. They didn't say, hey, he like he has a great family. No, my life speaks for itself. My gift speaks for itself. Not because I'm perfect, not because I think I'm special. It's because I went to work. When God places the man on your life, listen, the favor will make a way for you. Your gift will make a way for you. A great husband, you will become that, but you have to go to work. And it's hard and it's tough. But at the end of the day, it's worth every inch of it. And that's what I try to tell people all the time. I don't care how hard it gets. I almost lost my wife 
two years ago, a year and a half ago after losing her twins and seeing her go through what she went through gave me a different perspective on life because that's when we took a step back and understood this life is not about us and where we live and the house that we have. It's about our kids because if we can't do these things for our kids and prepare them and just be able to enjoy them in the days of their youth, like what are we doing these things for? And so that's when we really got serious about our life, got serious about the things that we want to see in our life and really got serious about the foundation that we were building. And that's when we just started to go on to work on these things. Like we see famous people uh, get divorced all the time and it just lets us know like that can be you. <laughs> so you either going to work on your marriage or you working on your divorce by default. And we make a decision. We're going to work on our marriage because divorce isn't an option and it's going to take work. And you have to grow together because if you aren't growing together, then you're growing apart. And sad as that is, like that's what happened to most people. And that's not just marriage. That's as a father. Think about if you own a business, think about what you guys do. If you show up at your job and you're not going to work on your specific field, do you think you're going to get better? You think somebody's going to want you doing things for the business or hiring you to do this, hiring you to do that? No, they don't trust you. Your life speaks for you. It's going to testify against you. It's going to expose what you haven't been doing. So when people see the results that they have, your life is testifying against you. When people go through things and they're talking about praying and do this and do this and it's not happening, it's not that it's not happening. You really haven't been doing the work behind the scenes. Yes, we see you praying. We see you doing these things on social media, but that isn't going to help you when life happens. When life hits you, listen, it's going to hit you. It doesn't care who you are. So that's when me and my wife made a decision. When we see things happen to famous people, it lets us know like we're not in the bubble. We're not immune from these things. If you're not going to work, like the Bible says, you either build on sand or you build on the rock. And at the end of the day, that storm is going to expose or it's going to defend you. And when life hits us and my wife was on her deathbed and people saw us and I recorded everything. I recorded the depression. I recorded the near death experience. So when people see our life and they see that and they say, you want attention, that's why you're doing this. I say, no, you remember I was talking about faith over here and you say, I didn't really go through anything. Check this video right here. We went through almost death with my wife. That's why we talk about faith. That's why we talk about God. That's why we talk about these things. So we was prepared for that moment. Not saying it was easy, but our faith wasn't just praying and just hoping and wishing that, you know, these things would happen. We was actually going to work behind the scenes. We was actually going to work on our marriage. We was actually going to work. God mold me. God build me. God do all these things for me. So when God started doing these things for you, you have to understand it's a process. But at the same time, he's testing and stretching your faith. What is faith if you're not going to be tested to see if it's real? He's testing your faith. He's growing you. He's maturing you. There's so many things that, you know, we went through in that moment that taught us about life. And I think that was probably one of the best experiences that we could have had because it gave us a greater appreciation for the love of God, for the grace of God. And I think when my wife went through that, uh, people don't know this, but she read... Um, she read Craig Groeschel's book. She'll tell you to this day, she hate that book. It's called Dangerous Prayers. And she prayed that God, she said, I just, I just have, I don't have any empathy. Or she's like, I just don't feel for people that deep. And listen, when she prayed that prayer, like he broke her in such a way that like right now she just sees anything and it just breaks her heart because it's, her heart is broke. She sees things the way that God sees. It just hurts his heart to see certain situations and she feel that now. But what I tell people is she had to go through something to feel that when she prayed that prayer and when she went through what she went through, that's that testimony. So when I show you this, this video of my wife, I don't want attention. I don't need attention. I have five kids. Like I get plenty of that. Like it's not for that. It's to let you know, like, <laughs> like I tell her, like our faith have been put on trial and like, listen, our prayer life, our habits, the foundation that we building, like it's going to defend us. It's going to get up and say, Hey, I saw what they went through behind the scenes, not on social media. I saw what they was doing in their marriage. I saw what they was doing in their kids. And you should like, this cannot happen to them. And that's what got us through all of these things, the work that we did behind the scenes. And that's what I tell people. You can talk about it and want it all day long. But if you don't go to work on it, you won't have it. Like great marriages don't happen by luck or by accident. It happens by work. Being a great father don't happen by luck or by accident. It happens by work. It happens by showing up. Most people don't want to commit to things like this. This is the thing that you have to do. This is a part of that commitment to yourself, to your kids, to your growth, to earn, learning, and relearning some of the things that you need to learn. You can't figure it out by yourself. I didn't. This is um. This is so many guys talking through me because I had to. I took the time to sit down and listen to these guys. 
Like, this is what that is. So when people tell me all the time, you're smart, you're this, I'm like, no, I just know how to listen to people. Exactly. I know how to listen like with a filter. Like everything you have to say to me, it may not make sense. I may not need it, but let's believe that filter that filter that I listen with is going to catch what I need and it's going to store it up within my soul. It's going to store it up within this well that I got. And at the right time, that's what God is going to pull out. So most people don't have nothing because they don't have nothing for God to pull out. You haven't been listening to anybody but the people at your work talking about how much they hate their job. That's not going to help your marriage. That's not going to help you as, as a father. So for me, it's about who are you listening to? Who's playing seeds? Who's put, poured in your well? Because that's what God is going to use at the end of the day. And my well is full of his word. It's full of wisdom from other guys, experiences, my own testimony, and just so many other things. And that's what I decide to. Like I said, when I prioritize what's important, that's important for me. So that's when to go in, go within me. Garbage in, garbage out. I don't put garbage in me. I don't put garbage in my mind because I know that's what's going to come out at the end of the day. So wisdom, understanding, Everything that's going to build me and not hurt me, everything that's going to build my kids and not hurt my kids, that's what I'm going to put in me because I know that's what's going to come out of me. So uh, I didn't mean to take you guys on that no, long man. Sometimes Ooh, I like, yeah. That's like the best <laughs> 20 minutes <laughs> probably go. ever recorded right there. I was <laughs> like, we got to end man. the show now. We got to go conquer the world. You know? <laughs> that's oh, right. man. I feel like climb that mountain. That's right. And we were all just yeah. like itching. Just like, yes. Yeah, so, I, man, get, man, I, get, I, get, I get excited about these things. Like people, well, and we like, should, because this should be yeah. the thing we're most passionate about. So I, I love it. Because I'm, I'm like you, man. If I, if I'm talking about something I really love, like I'm all, all in on that. So yeah. I, in a way, you're convicting me to be, like, I need to have just as much fervor and passion about um, being so intentional and being so future minded and and being very harsh on myself in terms of what what am I planting today? You know, th- th- it's just so we can't. You get one chance, right? You can't mess this up, and it and mm. it's. A generational thing so mm, so good i'll let the other guys chip in now too but i've just yeah that's the best compliment right is you put all that work in and someone says man you got so lucky and you go oh yeah yeah i'm a lucky guy <laughs> yeah, it's just you know no work or anything yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just gotta laugh it must it. be nice it's like yeah actually it is because i worked hard for it so right i actually yeah. appreciate it you know well i, I think personally i mean I love that the fact that I can clearly see that you anchor yourself daily in Christ. Like Luke 9, 23 says, we must deny ourselves and anchor ourselves in Christ on a daily basis. And so you're, you're clearly doing that. And, and one of the things that you had touched on there um, and that, that wonderful little sermon there was that, you know, anticipating as a father is so crucial, especially with teenage kids. You know, we have to be somebody who anticipates dangers and things. And that's, that's why I, and you have clearly, I've gotten in a habit of constantly being in a growth mindset and constantly learning and researching and adapting and adopting. I mean, mm. there's there's so many things that we have to do as fathers that is so crucial, but anticipation is is such a huge thing. And then on top of that, the anchoring ourselves, like you said, the, the rock foundation, not on sand, but on rock. And and that is is truth. We are anchoring ourselves in a daily basis with truth. Our self-worth our um our personalities all those things are not outsourced to the world but it's it's completely direct line with christ himself and so that's why i never uh try to i try to keep my blinders on when i when it comes to that but yeah anticipating such is a huge factor and you you had mentioned specifically with um you know the kids just loving on them and bring them into your house and there's a great book for that uh dr gordon newfeld has a book hold on to your kids and it talks about parent orientation in comparison to peer orientation and what you're doing is you're protecting your children because you're not letting them become peer oriented you're making sure that your intentionality keeps them parent oriented and so you're anchoring your children into you who's also anchored into Christ. And so that it's just a trickle down effect there. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's such a crucial point. Dads get that book, read it, uh, be intentional with it for sure. Mm -hmm. That is, that's really great input. And yeah, we probably need to go over that book on this show, but, uh, Martavis, I just want to do a quick time check with you, brother. Uh, do we need to let you? Do we need to no, wrap this I'm, up? Or, you know, my boys was they was in transition to going to bed. I actually let them stay up like an hour later. So okay, just, <laughs> just want to be sensitive. You know, you got you got a little army over there. You got to keep them in line. So no, well, we uh, we got we actually got a, a great schedule. Our twins go to bed at like six, and so our boys have a bedtime. They go to bed at eight thirty. Their room is nice. right across from me, so they're just trying to nice. hear what I'm saying. So 
They're trying to make sure I'm not over here. Okay. Yeah, you're not telling lies, are you? Y'all right, Dad? Okay, gotcha. I was going to say earlier, you know, we were talking about getting in trouble with kids and like your parents singling out certain people. Well, I was always the evil twin, and the first thing I do is just uh, point straight to that guy beneath me. You know, I was just be like, "It was Brandon, Mom." <laughs> Brandon's over there. I'm like, "Yeah, buddy, free ticket out of here." <laughs> it'll all come Bring around to you, down. Justin. Yeah, I'm kidding. I know, I know. The piano's gonna it'll fall on me. you eventually, but the, the, the um, I actually the have uh, I have a very. Uh, world exclusive live look at Dustin trying to figure out uh, the the code words his son is finding at school. <laughs> yeah, so this is Dustin strolling the halls for those of you watching. It's the classic meme of Steve Buscemi. How do you do, fellow kids? Yeah, so as soon as Dustin would start asking a question, this is the first thing that popped in my head. I can just imagine Dustin and I'm like, so, son? How you doing today, buddy? What's the cool stuff? You know, anyway. What, what's the haps today, kids? Yeah, I try to take us off track a little Can bit, but I had to roof? get that out. It, it was been in my head now for like thirty minutes. <laughs> People don't raise the roof anymore. Is that? Not, I thought that was still a thing. I don't think they raise the roof now. Man, okay. It's, it's you got to say things like it's on fleek now. Although I think that's probably passed already, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 There we go. Yeah. See ya. We're all boomers say, now. Yeah, they say crazy things. <laughs> I, was, I did a basketball camp for Raleigh, and they were saying some. I I had no that like even just paper rock scissors. They were just. I'm like, it's like six steps. Can we just get this over with right now? Yeah. So it's like just so many different things that that you know they talk about. But it's fun to like coach for me because I, I don't like like I say when I learn to like don't be so hard. I go out and I treat the kids like. It's going to be fun at the end of the day. I tell them, like, we're going to be excellent. And you know what excellent is? It's doing your best and having fun. And so for me, I try to make it as fun as possible. And I think what kind of helped me, like I said, with the tough love of Riley, the way that we had the basketball camp, I never did coach him. Uh, so it was able, he was able to, like, actually enjoy it. And at the same time, so when I see him, it's like you're having fun. And I try to inspire him in certain ways. I wasn't, like, hard on him. So it was just a fun way for me to actually get out and just have fun with the kids because I think a lot of times, like I said, it can be difficult. You never know what kids are going through at home. Uh, so for me, I try to be that father not only for my kids, but also for the kids that I coach as well. That's why I love to, like, help and coach whenever I can with, uh, with, with my boys. Yeah. We, we ordered a – we kind of iterated making some family values that we wanted to like put up in the house and uh, we're getting it like made, you know, a guy off Etsy to make it look all nice or whatever. But that was the third rule is we love to have fun. And I was like, I'm not going to budge on this one because we need to like commit that that's a family thing. You know, yeah. like we have to all agree we want to go have fun and whatever we're doing. And um, yeah, that I think that's another thing that you bring up that's so good for us to remind ourselves of is, you know, we're so task oriented as, as men and as fathers that like, we can really suck the fun out of a lot of things because it's so, you know, t you know, go, go, go. You got to take a step back and just kind of let it be sometimes. And, and that patience. Well, keep in mind and, as well that winning is fun. So Winning is fun. <laughs> yes. However, yeah, if getting that, that win was at the expense of like everything up to that point, it's, it's a little tainted by that point. So, yeah. 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 It's like, but that anyway, she's like, yeah, winning is what we're going to do. And then the, the kids are like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, cause we don't want to lose. And he's like, if your daddy says losing's okay, your dad's a loser. And it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've seen some video, like some videos recently. And I'm like, that's actually how some coaches talk too. So it's like, be involved with your kids. Like you should be the coach if you have the opportunity and, and make sure to make it fun and like, Make it lighter. Yeah, competition's great. But at the end of the day, it's if they're not enjoying it, they're not going to play it. They're not going to get serious about it. They're not going to, you know, strive to be better at it. So, yeah, absolutely, man. Like, I, I was just thinking about that and had to say something about it. <laughs> well, so, Martavius, uh, no, go ahead, Dustin. Uh, no, I was just going to say, speaking of, of coaching, um, books are obviously one of the best uh, things of wisdom o outside of the Bible, what are like, let's say your top three books that you would recommend, uh, whether it be self-help or anything that would help grow um, your son or a kid that you're coaching, uh, like that you would recommend for them as a teenager? Um, I had a couple here that I shared with you guys. Probably my number one would be just Coach Wooden. He had this book by Coach Wooden, right? It's Successes in the Details. Uh, man, he is like he was a leader of men. And I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with like 
Eat yeah, quick, dude. don't hurry, man. My yes, my grandpa yes. pounded John Wooden yeah. into me from like five years old about sports and stuff. So good. Yeah, that guy was, dude, I told you guys, I'm like a structure guy, and he has this thing called the pyramid of success. And listen, like if you can just get a couple of those things, you you like you're set to like you're set to build a great foundation. But he would just like getting like I went through like this whole. Uh, me and a good friend, we just used to do Zooms and like when we was building our businesses and we would just go through like personal development and we would just pick out just different people. Like it could be anything, but we spent an entire series going through each uh, of the blocks of his uh, pyramid of success. And like that was probably one of the most fun things that I did because I really didn't know who John Wooden was. I like I've heard of him because he's just like huge. But going through that gave me a like that just opened my eyes of like how great of a man he was and how he was just a leader of men. It's like you probably couldn't find anybody that had anything bad to say about it. And I think what I loved about him the most, as much as success that he had, the way that people talked that he loved and respected his wife is what made me think like this is the guy that I want to like model my life after and also like raise my kids up on because he was able to bring so many great men together to that organization, build them to go on to be amazing men. And it was tie your shoestrings. The first thing they did for practice, teach them how to tie their shoes. And that's one thing that took me back to like, it's the little things, get those things right. Dude, make your bed every morning. If you can do that, like you're setting yourself up to go out and went like, no matter what happens, like you can come home to a made up bed and tell yourself, I had one success today. So for me, that book uh, and any book about just his life in general is a great book. I love um, How God Makes Men. It's probably not for kids, but for men, this book right here, Principles, for me, uh, probably, like I said, it's talking about the guys in the Bible. They wasn't superheroes. They were men. They did a lot of great things. They did a lot of not so great things. But this is their life. And he just went in and just talked about each one of their life and just some of the proven principles that, you know, they had to endure and what they had to go through. And I just found it was so relatable. You can find any one of those guys and look at your life and be like, hey, I had so many similar struggles. Like, what did they do? And so for me, I think reading the Bible sometimes can get kind of hard because we can't put ourselves in their shoes. But when I read this book, like you can put yourself in their shoes because now it's almost like you're not focusing on the bigger picture. You just see their life and who they were as men. And although they was great, they had a lot of downfalls. And that's when as guys, we can be like, hey, if this guy had this many downfalls, like, and he still was a guy of great faith and still was able to live and build on his life, like, why can't I do it? And I think that's uh, one of the books that taught me, like, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to continue to, like, rely on God, go to yeah. God, equip yourself, and continue to build that foundation that you have. So those are just two of the books that I love. And uh Mark Batterson, play the man. If you, Mark Batterson is just a great author. But this book right here, like as far as just being a man, like this is one, like pick it up and give it a read. Like there's so many nuggets in here. Like I said, people ask me all the time where you get your wisdom from. I read books and I read books over and over. I listen to audiobooks and I listen to audiobooks over and over. I listen to old sermons and I listen to them over and over. Like these things are just who I am. So when they come out, they come out naturally because like I believe these things to my core because they're proven things that is going to last, outlast me. These are things that when my kids get old, I'm pretty sure they're going to talk about with their kids because I'm going to beat it in them. Not physically, but I'm going to continue to talk to them about these things. So for me, I just believe people write books and tell stories for a reason. Uh, you just have to be with, like invest that time. And if you invest your time in things like this, there's no way your life cannot bear the fruit that you're going to bear, that you want to bear. So uh, those are just a couple that I, that I just love. And that's why I kind of say it like these are some of the books that if any guy asks me, like invest your money into this because the yep. reward is well worth it. Right. Well, I'm, I'm got, pretty sure one. that I was going to say, I'm pretty sure that you're my twin and Justin isn't. So we're just going to swap. Yeah. Uh, I was I was gonna say one thing, uh, David. You know, King David from the Bible. I, I'm really glad that he existed because you know he's described as a man after God's own heart. But then you look at all the mistakes he made. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm not the only one. You know, like, um, yeah. If he can be, you know, the, the man who was supposedly closest to God, maybe ever, 
uh, with all of his mistakes that, you know, that, that kind of helps us reassure that as long as I keep taking the right step to get back on the right track, it, there, there is redemption available. Cause, um, yeah. So Dustin, I yeah. think you had yeah. something you wanted to jump in. I'll, with, I'll right? say just, uh, just about King yeah, yeah, David, for it. like any of you guys out there, go look up first Kings two, two through four. And just read his last words he left to his son. You want to know what inspires me? This is one of my favorite Bible verses of all time. These are his words to his son. And what he said to sum it up is show yourself a man. And he gave him an outline. He gave him a foundation. This is what you do. And so for me, that's one of those, those scriptures that when I talk about these things with my kids, it's founded on his last words to his son. Although he lived the life that he lived, like I said, it wasn't perfect. At the end of the day, he told he literally gave his son the best thing that he could have gave him a guideline of how to live your life. And it was about serving God, obeying his principles and just showing yourself a man. And that's for me is my inspiration. That's why I do what I do. That's why I continue to build uh, my life uh, the way that I build it, because it's built on that. That literally that last piece of advice that he gave to his son, Solomon. Now, are you talking about where he's speaking of uh, taking care to walk faithfully before me with all your heart and all your soul so that you will yep. never fail to have a man on the throne of Israel? Yep. Uh, that's yep. such a, yep. Oh, man, it's such a yep. yeah, yeah, such a good Do, one. What, sorry, what was the so it's first Kings. And what was the chapter and verse again? Uh, uh, first two Kings two, two through four. OK, he, he just gave him a command. Yeah. Perfect. I'm going to internalize that one thank you yeah that's 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 like my foundation right there because it's like just show yourself a man like this is what a man is this is what he does do this and there will always be a king on my throne yeah. that's, that's what i'm telling my kids right and that's, that's the beautiful thing is if we truly go to the lord with repentance like david did with his heart and we consistently do that he's going to sanctify us He's going to grow us. He knows the timetable in which he needs to do that. And so he's going to do that through situations, through suffering, through whatever he puts before our, our path, you know, and, and it's, it's such an important thing for dads to understand is if you're going through hard times, God is trying to build you up and prepare you for whatever he has for your future. So you have to trust and hope in God that not only does he have grace and mercy, but he has preparation for you. So that's one thing I would encourage for sure. Yep. I, I used to, uh, I told a group of guys before I said, when you think about a potter and you think about a person who's doing the pot and they got their hands on the wheel, like we think that we're the potter. We're not the potter. We're the person on the wheel. Uh, the sad thing is that that pot, the, the, the thing on the wheel, it doesn't feel anything, but us, we feel everything and it hurts and it hurts bad, but God is shaping us and he's molding us and all we know in the moment, like we don't know what's going on. Life just feels like it's just going crazy. Things are out of control. But at the end of the day, when he stopped that wheel and he's perfected you, he's molded you, he's got all these things out and you saw what he's made of you. Now you're gonna go out and people are gonna pay top money to have you because now you're valuable. Now you're worthy of what you've went through. So I tell guys all the time, it is your testimony that carries the authority. Is what you went through on the potter's wheel that God was able to shape you and mold you that's going to make you valuable. So many times you have to continue to stay on that wheel and allow him to do and get these impurities out and understand this. Like you're not like you a human being. You're going to feel these things like my wife went through everything that she went through. Like I could like I didn't want to sit in the hospital with her, but I had to. I didn't want to because physically I couldn't do anything for her. And I saw the battle that she was going through, which is breaking my heart. But at the end of the day, we knew God was with her. We had hope. We had faith. We had confidence. And people ask me all the time, like, how did you just sit there and be so strong for her? I was like, I had no other choice. Like when I read those vows, it was for sick of like, it was like you were living it out. So I tell people at some point in time, life is going to test you and it's going to put everything on trial. And it's going to come to that point where me talking about marriage, these vows have to mean something more than that wedding day now. 
Now you have to actually live it out. So when we talk about her testimony, we're not talking about the wedding day. That's the best part of our marriage. Like this was one of the best days and it just happened to be one of the worst times because of what she was going through. But it just brought us so much closer to each other. So uh, I just try to share like from some of the things that we go through because I, I know that's what people are going to relate to. Nobody can relate to being perfect and just showing up at church right. on time and getting all the kids. Like it's a struggle for us. We go to yeah. church now. It's, 10 45 we start our routine at eight o'clock a.m like that's how that's how long it takes for us to get ready for church but at the same time you have to do what works for you a lot of people are going to hear us get advice and talk about these things and say it doesn't work because you're trying to do it in a way that doesn't fit your family it doesn't fit your lifestyle take what we're doing implement it and make it work for your family build it around that one of you guys said earlier like you are the leader of your house you get your commands for god now you have to go out and lead you have to be strategic in the way that you're going to be lead each one of us is different i can't go into your workplace and start ordering people around and telling them you need to do this or go in and tell try to sell the dogs and be like this is what this is for and i don't know what i'm talking about he's going to look at me like i'm crazy well that's what most guys do when we go out the guys who are misinformed and who don't have a great marriage and you're trying to tell people how to have a great marriage they're like um your wife is trying to divorce you it's like your wife is doing this you're doing this you're over here and it's like there's no trust there's nothing to back you up so when you start like living your life and you're like literally doing things like this this when you have like this when people see who you really are i tell my kids all the time when you go to school you have to understand most of these kids don't go to church not because they don't want to because their parents don't go they've been through some things and unfortunately the church people only see them in church, treat them a certain type of way. There's nobody having fellowship with them. There's nobody talking about marriage with them. So when they do go to church and they try to talk about, go to join a church group, we love church groups, by the way, and they want to talk about real situations that happening within their home, they can't talk about it within that church setting. So now you have to get poor people outside of that church setting, and we love to do that. That's why we do so many marriage things, because we understand like most people aren't going to be vulnerable in church settings because they just feel like, they it, they it just don't work for a lot of people. So for us, we want to put you in a set. I love to do do things from my room right here because I am comfortable right here. Like I can talk all day long. I got my sweatshirt on. I got my flip socks on. I got my so I am comfortable. Like this is my place right here. So I started doing these men zooms. Like every man is a warrior, and guys will sit in a living room in their favorite chair with a TV right here with the lazy boy and the computer. They was comfortable. Best believe them walls are coming down. Best believe they're going to talk about things. We try to get guys to dress up, to come here, to do this. They are uncomfortable for number one, and they're not going to open up and talk about these things if they're uncomfortable. You have them out of the element, so you have to meet guys where they are. And like I said, sometimes I meet guys in bars, and I have amazing conversation with these guys. And I'm not saying I'm trying to like just go in and do these things, but sometimes it just happens that way. When God wants to use you, you have to allow him to do it. Sometimes you just never know when God is going to use you to bless somebody else. You just have to be willing to get out of your comfort zone and meet people where they are and understand like you are a vessel. And when you ask God to use you, you don't get to decide how he's going to do that. So for me, I just try to be conscious of the, 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 the conversations that I have with people understand it. You never know who's God, who I God is looking out of and who he's trying to use to bless you or who he wants to bless you for. So uh, I just try to be conscious with those things. That's a great point, man. You gotta, you gotta like meet people where they're at, you know? Um, and again, that I, I think that's leadership, right? That's just, I come from kind of a leadership background that that is basic leadership. You can't, you have yeah. to adapt to each person and, um, you got to take the same approach with your kids. Oh man, I, we are, this is like the most inspiring hour 45 of my life. I'm like ready to go. <laughs> You know, that's what most people don't know. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go check my, my to-do list and go get it done. Before that's I what I wanted. <laughs> I, I heard a couple of you guys say that like leadership, leadership. Yeah. That's what a lot of people don't know about me and my wife. We come from a background of leadership. Mm -hmm. So everything that we take is like, you can be so relatable because one thing that we learn about business, if you get the person right, you get the business right. So you take that, not just business, you get the man right, you get the marriage right. You get the wife right, right. you get the marriage right. You get the dad right, you get the father right. So all these things go hand in hand. So I just try to take what we learned over here, implement it over here. Everything works. If you read a book about leadership, it's not just for leadership. Open up your mind, expand your mind. Yeah, How can I principles are this universal? Course? It yeah. is, and it's gonna last. And it's like you like you have to see the fruit. That's what I tell myself all the mm -hmm. time. Like the fruit, if the fruit is over here, then you have to see the fruit over here. Just implement it, take it, and make it work for you. So literally, that's what I love to do. I don't just read books about the Bible and about God. 
leadership books. These guys are great and like they are that for a reason. They didn't just fall into these things. Like it's the reason they are what they are and they wrote a book about it. Like take their advice, learn from these guys. So for me, a lot of our stuff just comes from leadership, business, uh, whatever the case may be. Our mind is just open to understand like so many people got so many perspective and like different ideas about how to do things. So I can read a book about leadership and understand like I can use this raising my kids. So when I read books and people like ask me all the time about like, just different books dealing with my kids, many times it's not coming from somebody who wrote a book about kids. Right. It may be from a leadership book. It may be from this. It may be from that. There's so many different places. But the fact that I'm taking time to actually pour these things within me. So I don't know where it's coming from, from the well. I just know the well is full. And it's full of just different things, different sources. And like you said, it's the principles. They're going to outlast every single thing else. Right. You know, and you're feeling, I mean, it's it's fuel, right? So it's it's the fuel that's yeah. running your life. So you're, you're feeling it with high octane, you know, race race fuel for Formula <laughs> One cars, not you know, the, the cheap little stuff that, you know, barely runs a, a Volkswagen, you know, bug or something. So it, that's a really bad analogy, but yeah, you, you got to put, you got to fill your mind with, with goodness and things that are going to force you to be better. So, yeah. and then surround yourself with, with people in your life also, and you may have to cut some people out in, in a sense too. you know, limit how much they're involved in your life if they're detracting from that. So that, that we could probably do a whole episode on just that. Um, I wanted to actually just kind of bring it back to you. One, one final thing that you want to leave our audience with, if it's the only thing they, they pick up from you tonight, what is it? Stay close to the fire, man. Uh, like I said, I this didn't happen by accident. When I decided I wanted to change my life, like I stayed close to the fire. Many times that fire was other people. Many times other people was close to that fire. But I stayed close enough to understand, like, sometimes the sapling's going to pop off and it's going to come back far enough where it's going to hit you and it's going to keep that spark going. People talk about being a great husband, a great father. You're going to start. Anything is easy to start, but it's not about starting. It's about can you finish? It's about can you keep going? Right. So for me, I tell myself all the time, and I used to tell myself, anytime I want to do something, I don't want success. I want to be successful. I want to be full of it over and over and over and over and over. Anybody can have it for a season, but can you lose it and get it back? Can you be a great dad, make a mistake, admit you made a mistake, apologize to your kid, correct that mistake, learn from that behavior, and don't repeat it again? That's being successful. That's what I want to do. So for me, stay close to the fire. If it's this podcast, if it's the books, whatever the case may be, you need to be plugged into environments that's going to allow you to heal, to allow you to grow, allow you to, to become everything that you want to be. That's what I've done. I didn't get here by accident. I'm not perfect. I stay close to the fire and that fire can be anywhere. And that's what I understand. Everybody has like great, valuable advice, but you have to be willing to listen with a filter. If you don't like a book, that doesn't mean the book isn't good. It was a bestseller for a reason. There's something in that book. There's a reason you picked it up. Dig that out. I said, mine it out. People go looking for gold. They get the chunk. Then they have to go to work to get the gold out of the chunk. So that's what you have to do with the book. You want the wisdom. You want the understanding. Go to work. Mind these things out to get it. God's not going to give it to you. And, and just that's all said and done. I pray for a lot of things God to give to me. I couldn't recognize it because I wasn't mature enough to recognize it. But when I started to grow, I was like, okay. This look like this can be from God. I prayed. He sent this. So this must it must be in this right here. It's a circumstance. It's a trial. It's a struggle. Whatever the case may be, go to work on that one thing. Once I pick that up, oh, I got this. I'm going to store that with me. I tell guys all the time, when you think about somebody to come to fix something in your house, what do you know about them? They always got on a tool belt, and they don't use all the tools at one time. It's a specific thing yep. that's going to need this specific tool. That's what God is doing with men. He's equipping us with a tool belt. He's putting things. When you have a conversation or you hear something on this podcast, you may not have an argument in your in your marriage tomorrow. You may not mess up as a dad tomorrow, but I guarantee you next week you're going to do something. You're going to think, oh, I remember listening to that podcast. I remember him saying this. I'm going to try this. That's a tool on your tool belt that you now have. That's what resources do. It equip you with the tools that you need so that you can go to work and have the right tools already in place. You don't have to go to the store. You don't have to mess up. And I don't know what I'm going to do to fix this. Who can I reach out to? Can I get somebody to pray for me? No, I have the tool. I can go to work on this. That's when I learned. Talk about isolation. When I learned, you like there's certain things that you can't do. Own up to your mistake and have a conversation about it, a mature adult conversation with your wife. When I learned, that's the thing. I don't know why I didn't know it before. Oh, you can have conversations after you're mad. You can give each other grace and space to cool down and then come back and have a safe conversation. I'll, you can do that? 
And then we start doing it and it was a process. So now we get mad. Hey, give me 10 minutes. We have a full out conversation. Next thing you know, like we're talking through these things as mature adults understand it. It's not me versus you. It's us versus everything that's going to come against our marriage because things are going to come against your marriage. And that's the reason that divorce, the divorce rate is so high. Marriage is from God. Satan doesn't want these things to last. Satan doesn't want great, um, amazing fathers. He doesn't want that because he understands that the union is the family. If he can destroy the family, nothing else have a chance. So everything is built around the family. So my job is to lead and steward my family. And in order to do that, then I have to go to work on being the dad uh, that God has called me to be, the husband, the father, the man, the friend, the brother, the whatever he needs me to be. I have to like invest in those things. I have to make sure that these buckets are getting filled every single day. And anything else that's not important to me that doesn't align with my values and my principles, I have no time for it. Not saying these things doesn't matter. They may matter to you, but to me, they doesn't matter. So I'm not going to invest my time in these things. So figure out what matters to you, prioritize these things, and all Always keep the first thing first life inspiration marriage family not in no particular order but those things are what matter to me so when you follow my page that's what you're gonna see you're not gonna see anything outside of that if you do somebody hack my account so tell me so <laughs> for me I, I literally prioritize what's important and that's what you're yeah. gonna see for me my time don't get spent on anything that's gonna waste it so and that just me just coming to maturity understanding like I've been and done a lot of things my way and it led me going in circles. But when you're moving forward, you don't have time to go in circles. So you're not going to continue to waste your time on things that's going to keep you spinning your wheels. So you're going to have, you're going to mess up. But at the same time, that just means that's the end of the world. Mistakes are meant to be learned from, not lived in. So move on from your mistakes, learn from them, pass it on, help somebody out and just pay it forward. So for me, it's always about staying close to the fire, plugging in, continue to feed yourself, continue to feed your mindset, continue to stay around the right people. This group of guys right here, like, this is what you want. This take a snapshot of these four guys right here. These are the type of environments that you want to be in because no matter what happens at the end of the day, when something is going wrong, like you have a brother that you can call, Hey, this is what's going on. And they're not going to tell you, Hey, just come over and let's have a drink. They're going to tell you, Hey, let's have a conversation about this. Hey, you need to go talk to your wife right now. Hey, you need to go do this for your kids right now. They're going to tell you the right things that you need to do because a lot of people can give you advice, but it's not always the best advice. So who you surround yourself with right. matters at the end of the day. And me, I just try to surround myself with the people that I know. If I was to leave them with my kids, I can trust them with my kids. So if I can't trust you with my kids, then you're not meant to be in my circle. And it's, I don't, that's not saying I don't love you. There's no disrespect, but you just don't align with the principles and the values and the morals that I stand for. And you're going to impact my kids in some way, shape or form. And I just can't allow that being the steward of my home. So I just keep that mindset towards every single thing, whether it's business, marriage, whatever the case may be. I don't really shift from my principles and morals. If it, if it works for me as a dad, then it has to work for me as a kid because I'm trying to teach my, as, as a husband, because I'm trying to teach my kids these things. So I just like to keep everything simple and less that you have to focus on. So that's all I got for you guys. Well, that's, that's not just all you got. That was a lot. That's awesome, man. <laughs> uh, just so, so many great pieces in this episode that, uh, Boy, I'm going to be busy making clips for the next year. Yeah, welcome to the Present Father Podcast. You're yeah. now a permanent member. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to co-opt you. You're now you're now stuck. We're a five member team. I love it. That was great. Um, real quick, Martavius, go ahead uh, plug. I've got it going on the bottom. Go ahead plug plug where people can find you. Um, you know because this this passion and this fervor you have and this this wisdom really that you've uh, earned for, through your hard work. I want our people who listen to also be able to go to you and uh, to to benefit from your experience and, and your coaching. So go ahead, tell us yep. where we can find you. All right, so uh, you guys find me at Martavius Young on um, Instagram, on TikTok. Uh, I got a Facebook page that's pretty much, I post uh, some of the same videos. I just started on YouTube at The Young Fam. Uh, and I'm trying to build it out because we're trying to give people a, a more in-depth look into our life. And so we're just kind of, I kind of pivoted towards that because I just want to uh, do something different. Uh, for me, I love to build things and I love to build social platforms. I said before, uh, I want to build healthy uh, relationships on social media. 
so with me, it doesn't always have to be about drama. It doesn't always have to be about the things that's trending. Sometimes you can just be who you are and help, and help people feel comfortable doing those things. So for me, it's about building healthy relationships. Uh, and these are the platforms that I, I, I use it uh, to do it on. So I'm pretty consistent. Most of my videos are the same on all because I just share it because it's different people on different platforms. Uh, and so I just try to share some, maybe be different. YouTube are a little different now. But like I said, I'm trying to do longer content with me and my wife. So uh, and if you guys, we actually just started uh, a marriage Facebook group that me and my wife started. It is called Marriage uh, Connect and Grow. If you guys want to be a part of that as well. Absolutely. absolutely. She uh, just started. Um, yeah. yeah, he just started. I want, I want to hear some of her comedy anyway. So, oh her, man, don't boost, boost her, don't boost her up. Oh, she. Oh, we gotta boost her up, man, because yeah. I, I gotta hear her talk on you a little bit. <laughs> no, she she actually is pretty funny. She listen, my wife is amazing. Like you guys think that, like you guys hear me, it's because of her. When I decided to walk away from football, it's because she decided that you know when she was pregnant, she wanted to retire me from football because she just had our son, which is our first kid. So new mom, like, she's like, no, you need to be here and help. And like, literally, like she went to work and I was able to walk away from a full-time job and football because she built a business. Uh, just, just not taking showers. Like she went crazy. And at the same time, like she was going to work on her mindset. So when I tell you guys stay close to the fire, for me, that fire was my wife, and she was just burning hot for the Lord, for growth, for marriage, for all of these things. And she just kind of, that sapling hit me from her, and she just kind of put me in an environment where I saw other women who were doing the same thing, but the husband were doing it with them. And so I started to see like, oh, these type of marriages are possible. And that's when I opened up my eyes to realize, okay, these things aren't just on TV. These things aren't just stripped it. Like these things, you can actually go to work and build these things. So because of her, I was able to like go to work on myself to become these things. But she was able to put me in these environments where I was surrounded by guys like you who just wanted to be different, who wanted something different, who wanted to step up and be a light. And so I give my credit all, give my wife all the credit in the world. Like she didn't force me to change, but she gave me that, that space and that grace to actually go out and invest in myself. And she actually inspired me too, because she went to work on herself. She didn't preach at me. She didn't tell me you need to do this. You need to do that with her life and just her work. It just, I was like, I need what you have. And she just inspired me to like go to work on myself. I love it. Awesome, uh, apparently though, she did force you to come here tonight. So we're, we are thankful. Yeah, she did. <laughs> I, listen, <laughs> she did. She did. So uh, shout out to your I'm, wife. Thank you. I'll Thank say you, she Mrs. Didn't, Young. She didn't, <laughs> she didn't force me. She just told me you guys would be a great platform because you're in alignment with what I believe. She loves to check comments, DMs. Like I tell her, stay out of it because once you start to grow, people just they think they just know you so well, and sometimes right. it's not always good. And yeah. so I don't really like I don't mind negativity because for me, I just turn it on his head. I'm like, sometimes you need that. Like you guys were talking, I was just, I was just a quick story. If you guys didn't follow like way back, I used to start my, my messages. I used to say message and then I'll give the message. And I got that from AOL online. If you, if you, you guys. Oh, I, I know. know. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I, know. AOL. Boomer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I used to start my message with that and I got this one negative person. And that's like, that's why I don't read the comments. And they was like, you know what? Every time you say that, I just keep strolling because I don't want to hear what you got to say because that is annoying. And I was like, you know what? This is this is who I want to hear. So I switched up and started doing something different because of that person. So sometimes the comments, like they're not meant to offend you. Sometimes people just don't get what you're doing and it, it can also help mm -hmm. you. So that's when I made a shift because of that person. I was like, if I can reach this person, I can reach anybody because... They don't want to hear what I got to say anyway. So I, I, they still didn't listen to what I had to say. So, but at the same time, my wife is always in the comments, listening to people like that. And she just stayed on me about you guys. She was like, you just need to like, I think you need to do this. You need to reach out to them. So she didn't, she didn't force me, but she did. She just, for some reason, she valued what you guys are doing and she just kind of kept stayed on me about it. So. Awesome. Well, we appreciate it. Well, yeah, we appreciate it. We appreciate her being persistent. We appreciate your time tonight. Sorry, yeah. go ahead, Justin. I cut you off. No, I'm good. I'm good. good. You good? All right. So uh, 
Yeah, so once again, you can follow Martavis Young on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. So it sounds like virtually everywhere on the planet. Uh, Martavis, this has been awesome. I'm super pumped, motivated. Um, thank you for coming on tonight. <clears throat> Everyone, please do us a favor. Go follow Martavius. And uh, I mean, well, really do yourself a favor because clearly uh, his cup overflows and it's going to help you out a lot. So uh, that's going to do it for tonight. Martavius, thank you so much. And uh, everyone, we'll see you back next week. We've got another guest lined up for next week. So take care, everyone. And keep, uh, keep climbing the mountain. That's right. So take care. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Present Fathers Podcast. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Spotify to catch all of our amazing episodes. We will see you in the next one.